Good evening, one and all. It's a Sunday night, and I'm here with Mauler or Count Spookler, or I'm not sure what I should call you in October. <laughs> what's what's your preferred pronoun for, for uh, this month? Change it all the time. I think I'm Spookler. Yeah, I'm Spookler. There you go. All right. Yeah, I'll go with Spookler. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, yeah, and hello to everyone. Obviously, you know, you'll, you'll probably have realized that we never got through all the Super Chats on Thursday night because I'm insanely incompetent at this stuff and I just couldn't do any more. So I thought I'll leave it till Sunday night and then I'll catch up on them. And uh, Muller was gracious enough to join me for this. So, damn, yeah. thanks for coming on, man. No problem. All right. Well, let's see how far we got. And uh, and then I'll weep because it's like, oh, shit, there's like 200 to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember it. So we got to this bit. Wormy Spoons here said, Taskmaster is a tangerine, by the way. Oh, I knew it. I, I think he would have performed better as a tangerine, to be honest, than as a, yeah. a super soldier. Um, yeah. yeah, it'd be good if... Uh, I mean, to be honest, it would have been, it would have looked more believable if like he'd removed that helmet and it had just been a tangerine photoshopped on for his head instead of like, At least got Curry Lenkle. At least then we'd be like, oh, film self-aware. Okay, cool. Everything's pretty good now. Yeah, it's just fucking tangerine right there. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm intimidated by it. Um, Bill Sotheby said, don't you just love how Hollywood loves to lecture us on how movies and TV discriminate against minorities? I'm sorry, but who handles the casting? Don't put that shit on us. <laughs> That's a good point, hey. actually. <laughs> Dude, you must feel awkward as a casting director whenever they make those points because you're sitting there like, oh, I mean, I mean, I... I thought I did it as best. At, okay, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, wait, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> that's what <I> Fuck. <laughs> uh, what's the next one here? Uh, Warp says, dudes, if you like nobody in hardcore, watch Boss Level. Yeah, people have been talking to me about this, right? Have you seen Boss Level more? Okay, so as you may know about me, it's not just a lack of like preaching that gets me to love films. I watched Boss Level. I thought it was shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I um I loved Edge of Tomorrow, and then I watched YMS's video on it, and I was like, "Ooh, Edge of Tomorrow isn't as well written as I thought, but it's still got some good uh, moments in it and some really decent character work." Boss Level felt like a really bargain bin Edge of Tomorrow. Right. Um, it is fun in the strictest sense of the word. I find a lot of fun. Malignant is really fun. I think. Um, yeah. Like, wow. Well, yeah. yeah. But like, I would hope the boss level. Like, it, I hope we can um, push for better than that. But I, you know, uh, I, I guess I recommend it. A lot of people seem to be really happy with it. Yeah, I mean, I've got a real soft spot for Edge of Tomorrow. Um, I, 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 I like really the like concept, it. and it's kind of a tough one to to pull off and not just have it become really repetitive. And I think Edge of Tomorrow just walks that fine line. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I liked it, but yeah, I'd be interested to watch it if nothing else, just to kind of compare notes. Um, hmm. That's cool. Uh, King Crow says, Chris Gore, the protege um, has a female hero who takes a beating. Give it a shot. Um, Long Kiss Goodnight was a classic also. It, it was. Yeah, it was good. Um, it was Shane Black who wrote Long Kiss Goodnight. And it, it's a weird one, right? Because I think they paid a shit ton of money for the screenplay. Like, it was like a record amount that they paid him for that one. Um, hmm. But the movie itself kind of looks a bit cheap. And I don't know what to pin it on. I don't know if it's just like the, um, you know, they filmed it in Canada, I think. Um, I seem to recall that. Um, you know, not a particularly huge star that was in it. Like, you know, Gina Davis wasn't like A-list or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. They did have Samuel Jackson, though, so fair dues. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know. um, Andre Jones says, yes, made it before you guys finished. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I had other plans. Uh, your Thursday show will start about an hour before I get out of work. Hello, fellas, whom I watch and listen to so often. Well, thank you, Andre. It was appreciated, man. Oh. Um, Miss Sunflower, they're destroying the traditional male hero on purpose because they don't want role models like the patriotic Captain America in their new world, since only real men can lead an insurrection. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to put on the tinfoil hat or anything, but we do feel like we're kind of losing a lot of our traditional heroes. Well, you know, one by on. one, they're just getting killed off and they're not getting replaced by anything particularly good. I'll just pop it on for sec, the tinfoil hat. I think that um, Soldier Boy and The Boys Season 3 is going to be Captain America criticism, basically. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not looking that. forward to it. It's going to be really annoying. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got my own issues with, with Season 2 of The Boys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I thought the, the first season, like, just... 
it, it was good satire. It kind of critiqued everyone equally, um, and it was, you know, it was it was a satire on on the kind of superhero genre, but also like corporatism and how it like co ops everything. And you know, I think it was pretty decent stuff. Um, season two, it, it got much more partisan, and yeah, didn't didn't enjoy that so much. <laughs> I don't. I don't see that recovering from that. To be honest, I just think it's going to get worse. Um, what's the next one? Andre, sorry, uh, yeah, Andre Jones again. Uh, to your comment, critical drinker. Yes, we'd rather hang out with you guys. Ah, oh, that I think that was when we were talking about, um, you know, YouTube uh, versus like say professional critics or, or professional yeah. like produced shows and stuff. Like, yeah. We're wildly incompetent, but at least we mean what we say. I mean, Jesus, like at least when we we give our opinions on things, you can be reasonably sure we've given a an honest opinion because we've got no one paying us. Um, and I think oh, that's yeah. the difference. Um, Blaine Savini, yay! Thursday afternoon tights. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah. so what we're turning into. Uh, Jim says, "Let's go, Brandon." <laughs> I don't know if you if you heard about that one. That was that was pretty funny. Uh, I think I heard you guys mention it on the other thing. I, I'm very out of the loop on that. Well, I, I think and you know I, I'm not going to take sides on this one, but I think there was like a big um, big sort of baseball game going on. Uh, no, it was a it was a NASCAR race or something like that. Like some like traditionally, you know, a sport that you would you would get more in the southern states. Um, and like this guy had, had won it and he was getting interviewed and like the chow, the, the crowd was all chanting like, fuck Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> and the news anchor who was trying to conduct the interview was like, the, the guy who had won was called Brandon basically. And she's like, oh wow, they're all chanting, let's go Brandon. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> I mean, points to, to her for quick thinking, like Jesus. Pay her more. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's got a good future ahead of her. Uh, Ed Starr says, online has replaced my television habit completely. Um, I mean, I don't blame you, man, honestly. Uh, yeah, people were saying it was uh, NASCAR. Yeah, it was a NASCAR race. Sorry, I uh, I wasn't too well up on the, the meta behind it. Uh, but yeah, I think I got there in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, Taker610 says, there's a ship in Star Wars called the Mandator. Um, actually, the Dreadnought in TLJ was a Class 4 Mandator. <laughs> it's a baddie ship for a reason. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, if it was a woman dater, though, it would be good. Uh, that would be the resistance ship. Mm. Uh, nothing says, add a bump to drinkers, Friday night tight edit. Uh, it's ready to do, who drank my liquor? I'm ready to, uh, those are nice boobs. Uh, hey, as you look, mm. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best with this one. Uh, T Down Under says, gentlemen, thank you for all you do. It's good to hear rational options free from ideology, helping me stay sane in the prison colony of Melbourne. Uh, well, I'm glad we can help, man. And yeah, it's kind of ironic that Australia's kind of gone full circle now. <laughs> it's the penal colony once more. Um, yeah, it's fucking <laughs> weird, man. I, just, I don't get it, man. I, just, I don't get it why they've, they've been so like full on with this stuff. Um, Cody Griffin says, fun fact, the Paw Patrol movie isn't woke. My four-year-old dug it and swear it was actually good. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll take that recommendation then. I'm glad Paw Patrol hasn't fallen to the <laughs> yeah. the agenda. We, got, we still got Paw Patrol. Mauer, I need you to do a deep dive um, range of praise it. on Paw Patrol. <laughs> it needs to be at least four hours long. Characters, man. They go on great arcs in Paw Patrol. Um, what's the next one here? Uh, Ginger Gandalf says, yeah. right, Jesus, who's the slick Jake Ryan wannabe in the corner? <laughs> I guess that's wow. me. Uh, yeah, I had my tux on the other night. I'm sorry, I'm just in a t-shirt tonight. These are my, my Sunday night like threads. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Stay off. I didn't get time to get dressed up for this. Uh, Tarmanel says, great discussion, cheers, and you gave me 100 Czech Corona, so thank you, mate. Uh, that's almost enough for a dance with Tatiana. Perfect. Mm. Uh, Warp says, our suffering will be legendary, even in hell. <laughs> That'll be for the, the female Pinhead reboot then. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, that, that sounds special. Um, Great Cthulhu says, the intro from Resident Evil 1 looks pro in comparison. Yeah, I've got a, such a soft spot for Resident Evil 1. Um, we were talking about this the other night, weren't we? I think you didn't come into the series really until 4. That was kind of your... Oh, the games, moment. yeah. Yeah. I think even the films. 
No, no. Every one of those films is legendary. <laughs> Wouldn't change a thing. Retribution, man. Fifth one. That that's one of the craziest <laughs> films that exist. Is that uh, is that the one where they go into VR? Yeah. Um. Well, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the third one? Uh, begins where Alice wakes up in the first film, and she walks around and she avoids all the traps of the first film, and then she gets shot randomly and she's thrown into a pile of corpses of Alice. Yes. And like. Oh my god, I knew about all that because I knew that they were going to do the clones and the testing, the T-Virus and stuff. Rags had never seen any of them before, and he was literally like, what the fuck is happening? And I, was <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I can't explain it. You have to wait for the film to do it. <laughs> I, I think that the, my favorite bit was, uh, I think it one, might have been the third one or the fourth one. It's, fuck, they all start to blur together, but it's like an army of Alice's storm into <laughs> like, Umbrella HQ and like... Albert Wesker escapes on a jet or a Quinjet yep. or whatever the fuck the Resident Evil equivalent is with one Alice on board and then blows the rest of the place up. Yep. And then he injects her with a serum to take all her powers away. <laughs> it's it's like, so terrible. Like, within the first five minutes, it's like, yeah, we've just undone everything that the series has set up. <laughs> we don't have to deal with all that bullshit. You're like, okay. I think, uh, yeah, it's just... Oh, fuck. You know... With the Resident Evil games, like you've got such a, a, a rich kind of um, history of, of characters and, and scenarios and stuff to draw on, and yet they did none of it. They just went on a completely different direction with a character that means nothing because she's got no, she's got no history, she's got no personality, she's just a complete blank slate. Um, and it was such a weird choice. Um, and I, I think with this new series that they're creating or this new movie, they're obviously trying to at least take elements from the game and put them into context. It's just, it seems to be done on a budget of about £200. Yeah. Uh, and it's a shame. Uh, Greg Marquez says, Blitverts, advertising for the TikTok generation. Yeah, this was how we were, you were mentioning that uh, trailers now have got like five seconds of, just yeah. a trailer of the trailer just so it can go into YouTube ads before people skip them. Uh, it's fucking, it's a strange industry and it leads to strange results and I find it obnoxious as hell seeing a five minute, a second ad before the ad. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's getting that way. It's like fucking hell. Like, how, how much can you distill it down? <laughs> you know, like how much further can you really take this? Um, are you just going to get like a, a big splurge of like information all at once, like one second, like the whole trailer just condensed down and just hope that subliminally it goes into your head or something? Yeah. Um, Radim Nichet uh, gave me 50 check Corona. Thank you, sir. Uh, deleted Scenes says, Hail Drinker, Chris Moller, Nerdrotic, and Chats. So you hailed everyone there. Thank you, Deleted mm. Scenes. Uh, Michael Crum Crumrine says, Hollywood has shown they wanted LA to be a dystopian nightmare for decades. 60% of the movies since the 80s are in such an environment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. It's like, it's somewhere between Escape from New York and Demolition Man now in California. That's, and I can't tell which direction it's going to go. Mm -hmm. I feel like Demolition Man's more likely, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Getting uh, citations for fucking random words you use. That I want that to happen almost. Little machines that are like, excuse me, you just said a naughty word. Here's yeah, a fine. You're fined one credit for a violation of the verbal morality statute. Oh. <laughs> just like getting them out so you can wipe your ass with them. <laughs> yeah. uh, Little Bullet says, TikTok is like Max Headroom blipverts. Oh, Christ, yeah, TikTok. I don't understand it because I'm not a child. Um <laughs> Party um, Vissi says, federal and blue state governments are like the bully pushing around the average person as the quiet kid. One day that quiet kid will have had enough. Maybe indeed. Uh, I just can't see it happening anytime soon. Like, they keep voting for it. Um, Dragon's Advocate says, Oi, drinker, kick Mauler. He still had 13 more hours of TFA reviews to edit and keeps hiding in people's live streams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mauler, why are you doing this when you could be editing TFA? <laughs> Because sometimes you just want to have a little chat. That's why. That's it. That's it. And it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Um, Ian Soforth says, Hey, guys, great show. This money was supposed to go towards boosting the Resident Evil budget, but I thought I'd pass it on to you lot instead. <laughs> they gave me £50. Pounds. That literally is the budget for the new Resident Evil movie, man. You could have made a whole new film with that. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate it. Thank you for the donation, mate. Uh, Brett Cohen says, So if you like cashews, never become a spy. Uh, 
Damn, I really wish I knew the context for that. I, was say, I don't recognize that one. Uh, oh, sorry, man. Rudy McDade. This is the, this is the pitfalls of like doing a catch up stream. Um, yeah. Rudy McDade says there's an international trailer that seems to do a better job of the trailer. Uh, fuck, what were we talking to? What were we talking about at this point? It must have still been the Resident Evil, I suppose. Um, Andre Jones says, "Hey, not you guys. You guys remember to do their vids. Yes, Tom, every time." Um, sorry, remember to like their vids. Um, Bear Business One says that song now belongs to the He Man meme. Uh, yeah, that must have still been Resident Evil. Yeah, because yeah. they had that shit song playing over it. Oh yeah, really out of place and weird. Mm -hmm. uh, Soul Fiend, maybe the hope is Ghostbusters is sold out, so people just say, "Man, let's go watch Resident Evil." <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, Ray. DiMatteo uh, gave me a super sticker, so thank you. Thumbs up. Actioncom says, do you think the day the clown cried will ever get mass distribution? Would you see it? So, fuck, what, what is this in relation to? I'm going to have to look this up. I was going to say, I don't know. Is, this... uh, is that a film? Let's see. The day the clown cried. Uh... Oh, right. Um... The Day the Clown Cried is an unfinished 1972 Swedish-French drama directed by and starring Jerry Lewis. Uh, it's based on original screenplay by... Right, okay. Right, so apparently you insisted that The Day the Clown Cried would never be released, but later donated an incomplete copy of the film to the Library of Congress under the stipulation that it was not screened before June 2024. Okay, so we're almost there. According wow. to Lewis's son, there's no complete negative of the, of the film, and outstanding copyright issues have prevented its release. Uh, so why did he? Why that date? Do you know? I have no idea. Because um, hmm. it was made in 1972, so it's not like it was like 50 years later or anything. Uh, yeah, no idea why they, why he stipulated that. Uh, so I don't even know much of the story to it. Oh no, there is a there is a plot summary here. It would take me forever to read through it, but yeah, there's, I've heard like um, there's other examples of films like these where they've they've made it and it's stipulated not to be released for at least a hundred years or whatever, and no one knows what it's about. Um, but yeah. Oh well, I guess in 2024 we'll find out. Maybe. Chuck Grable says, I stopped believing in mainstream news for over 20 years and I'm 36 now. I'm a military vet and I've seen shit that would break any person mentally and people are complaining about things they have no understanding of uh, or have no comprehension. Well, I mean, ch come on, Chuck. You you're ignoring the true issue of our time, which is man-spreading. And, uh, you know, people have, have PTSD uh, from that. Um, I've been complaining about that a lot. My arms and legs just go all over the world. So it's just like you're spreading and doing your long spread. It's just yeah. Like, yeah. Sorry about that. But, you know, this is taking man spread to its logical conclu <laughs> conclusion. Long spreading. It's like, oh, fucking Mauler's here again. <laughs> <laughs> like taking up an entire train carriage just with all your tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> this is arm again. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. don't touch it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Christ, man, if you've done time in the military and have been on deployment, I imagine uh, it puts all kinds of things into context. So I can't imagine the, the kind of laugh that you have at, uh, at normal people just and all their bullshit. Um, Levu, Levu says, this just in, Milton from the Suicide Squad is getting his very own spin-off series. I was hoping for Weasel, but who knows? Um, everyone is getting a spin-off. Everyone that's ever <laughs> been in anything is going to get a spin-off. That guy in the background in that one scene, he's getting a spin-off. Yeah, totally. That 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 woman with the giant nose in TLJ, uh, I, I I think she's yeah. going to get a spin-off. Um, Honestly, what happens with her and her girlfriend? That's, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think the peak of that, by the way, is just being like Cassie and Adel getting this like million dollar TV show. And everyone's just like, who the fuck is that? And you're like, it's the <laughs> one from Rogue One. Remember? And you're like, who? <laughs> he's <laughs> like, you know, the guy that died. <laughs> I've been in this yeah. fight since I was one years old. <laughs> <laughs> I've done terrible things for the resistance. I don't fucking care. You're dead. Who are you? <laughs> Go away. Yeah, like a character with no fucking charisma or anything. Like, no. Ah, oh, damn. Like, why do they think people care about this shit? Um, XSL says, do we have a great hero's journey in this era? 
or sorry, how do we have a great hero's journey in this era? Um, uh, I have to kind of just hope that someone makes one. Yeah, there, what was that I was watching today? So one of my uh, one of my subscribers emailed me, right? I think it was through Patreon, and uh, they referenced like a YouTube video that had been made, and it was like uh, a hero's journey, but for like an NPC in a, a fantasy game, um, and he, he ends up getting like. Um, he gets taken on a quest by like a, a user and he has to like save the princess and stuff. But like his only line is like, morning, nice day for fishing, ain't it? <laughs> and it, but honestly, he's got a better character arc and a better hero's journey than anything in like modern cinema. It was just fucking beautiful. Was I a wait great for idea. Like, I, I'm going to wait for chat to catch up with me because someone here will have seen it. Uh, Balin's Root, that's it. Balin's Root. Uh, it, it's about 30 minutes long and uh, if you get a chance more give it a watch uh, it, it's like the the cinematography and everything is beautiful i think it was filmed in new zealand so the, they absolutely nailed like all the the gorgeous landscapes and mountains and, and forests and all that stuff but it's yeah it's really funny uh, yeah I'll, I'll check it out Balin true yeah that's classic and yeah <laughs> honestly he has a proper complete hero's journey character arc it's just beautiful to watch uh, what's the next one? Uh, Nate A says, "Come on, Skyfall was great." Um, you you weren't so you weren't so sold on it. Well, I, I remember being surprised by it. Like I liked it more than I expected to, and I felt that M got a really good send off. The problem is, I haven't seen it in so long that I might have a different pos position if I was to rewatch it. You know, I just want to be yeah. confidently saying it's great or anything. Yeah, uh, I, I I recall it just being like a relatively simple story um, for for a. Daniel Craig Bond movie. It wasn't particularly convoluted, well, and it was all about kind of the rivalry between the characters. So I'm assuming you knew the old dude in that film was going to be played by Sean Connery, um, but they ended up not going through with that, apparently. And I was thinking to myself, like, man, it would have made more sense probably to have the old guy be played by Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. Um, because Am joined him. Like, And, and I was like, well, curiously, because I never even looked into it, why didn't uh, Brosnan get another Bond? Did he give up? Did blah, blah, blah. And I looked into it, and apparently he was set to do another one. And then they just called him while he was working on a different film and said he's out. And he was like, yeah. oh. Um, uh, and apparently they're on bad terms as a result of that. So it's like, yeah, no wonder. Because I think he deserves to get some kind of recognition at some point. Because in a way, Brosnan is the one that like brought Bond into a modern era as well. He very much did. Um, he, he got Bond past that Cold War period. Um, yeah. And obviously brought it into like yeah what we have now. Um, I, I think the reason was... Um, and it's really sad, actually, because when he saw films like Casino Royale, um, and they were more, you know, grounded and serious and stuff, he was he was like, "Yeah, that's the kind of movies I wanted to make as Bond." But you know, towards the end, particularly, they they just went all out with like the gadgets and the the, the campiness and stuff, and uh, yeah, there's and a good kind of ruined it. And I think you know, by the time he did his last one, he was well into his fifties, and so probably at that point where he was just you know not quite there physically and they probably thought yeah it's time to go with a younger actor i guess if we're going to do it but I'm, yeah I, i've got so much time for brosnan as bond like i think do he, I. Had, he had the look um he had the, the the attitude um he was very suave and cool um not not yeah. terribly physical but he kind of didn't need to be like he was good enough and um yeah it, it's just a really it's a shame he didn't get better scripts to work with I was looking at him. I kind of want to watch his era again because uh, I was looking at just a clip and it's just like classic Bond where he's talking to somebody about something and there's a girl walks up to him and it's a bank and it's just like, she's like, can you see, uh, can you look at my figures? And he just looks at her and he's like, I'm sure they're all well rounded. It's just like, ah, <laughs> uh, you rap scallion, you. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was just, that was the last of the, the classic Bond style. You yeah. know, where he womanizes constantly, like he's always fucking a woman at some point. Like he, sometimes, like it comes in, she's got nothing to do with the plot. He's just having sex with her, <laughs> and then and, like, moves on to the real mission. <laughs> at Christmas Jones, that was her name. And yeah, the whole fucking reason for that, I think, is just one joke where he says Christmas comes more than once a year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it for that joke. To Absolutely, be yeah. Unless I think, because I was watching Gary's video for it, uh, he put it out today. I think it's just like, man, Bond was really fun. It really was. Like, yeah. I don't even associate that with the Daniel Craig era. 
No, no. Um, it, the Daniel Craig era is like the Last of Us two of of Bond. You know, <laughs> yeah. where it's like, yeah, fun is not a word we use around here. It's just dead fucking serious the whole time. Uh, and it's yeah, it's just it misses that element of Bond. Like yeah, I said before, um, the more you try and turn him into a character like Jason Bourne, the the more you lose the the very essence of what makes Bond who he is. You know, he's meant to be not quite a gentleman spy. Like, he can obviously fight if he needs to, but um, he's meant to be a bit more sophisticated than that. He's not just, like, a a, a grunt on the front line. I'm uh, just really cunning. I usually... I'm looking for a time where I go, oh, that was clever, nice, instead of, how the fuck did you do... Okay. Do you remember in um, the opening of Spectre, he's, like, on a building that gets destroyed, and he just happens to fall, like, two stories onto a sofa, and he's like, oh... I was like, what the yeah. fuck is this? Looney Tunes? Like, what am I yeah. watching? Um, the only, the, one of the few bits I enjoyed um, in um, in No Time to Die was when he's with Anna de Armas and they're they're having their shootout and then he stops halfway through to like pour them both a drink. Uh, yeah. I just thought that was a great little like nod to like older generation of Bond. It's like that, yeah, that's absolutely the kind of thing that Connery would have done or Brosnan would have done. Um, that's the thing, just, man. If the next person to make a Bond film just watches all of them and then distills it into a formula and makes another one, you can still do it. They're just not going to. No, no. Um, and it's it's yeah, it's a real it's a real shame. Um, Adamantium Tantrum says they. Sorry, uh, I missed one there. RNT is in it. Says uh, drinker, you boss. You once hinted at a greatest gunfight bid. Humbly suggest the Guggenheim fight from the international, very underrated film. Um, yeah, I mean, Christ, there's there's so many fights um, that I would love to put in because, you know, every so often I like to do like a top five, you know, countdown video, like the greatest lightsaber fights or the greatest last stands or whatever. And yeah, gunfights is is definitely going to be one of them. Um, yeah, I will, I'll mm-hmm. have a lot to draw on in order to do that. Um, Adamantium Tantrum says they may need to keep Bond's testosterone level up in order to show it in China. Yeah, they've... Um, they got pretty strict rules now. They've, they've they've brought in like a mandate that's like they can't have feminized men. <laughs> so it's like, well, that's ninety percent of modern Hollywood out the fucking window. Then, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, duh, it just shows you the different cultures, doesn't it? Like they, they're almost like I think they're teaching masculinity in school for their kids. Um, they they want to very much have that clear line in terms of like boys and girls. Whereas over here, like we're we're kind of doing the opposite, um, and well, we'll see who comes out on top in the end. Like, I'm gonna get ready for those Chinese tanks to start rolling down the street anytime now. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, we'll have nanobots to beat them with. Yeah, yeah, nanobots which last forever and are EMP resistant, em- EMP immune electronics. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> It was it was funny, Gary. Like, because I watched Gary's video as well, um, and he was just like, "Yeah, Bond still got his watch, which which puts out an EMP, which can destroy anything electronic." Just well, keep that in mind for later. It's one of those lame. Reference. It's that lame writing sort of technique where you know that they were like they probably thought about it at some point. They were like, "Just have Q say it's impossible that that, that you can't get rid of them. You just can't." Like, yeah, they're um, uh, they're electromagnetically shielded, and they they draw energy from your body or something. Just to cover every aspect of it. But yeah, they, like my, my initial thought was just like, well, okay, they, they obviously run on a power source, like, and it'll run out eventually, right? Because they're just tiny little things. Well, to be know? fair, you can put on bloody gloves. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really weird to throw in that because it makes us think, oh, wait, is he killing himself? Yeah. And you can tell Gary's review, he refers to it as a suicide a couple of times. It's like, it kind of is. Bond has been shot before. I'm just saying. I I checked up on this because I needed to make sure it wasn't like that he'd been dosed with this thing and it would kill any human that he comes into contact with. In which case, you could kind of understand. All right, okay, you might have to remove you know. yourself. Yeah, exactly. You can't you can't be around humanity if if you're that dangerous. You're like a walking biological weapon. But it's literally just those two people. It's like okay, just do Skype calls with them. If you want to yep. spend time with them, it's not worth like ending your life over. Uh, so yeah, what, what a like, shit thing to do. You know, have Q work on it. See if he can find an answer. Yeah, reprogram them eventually. Like hack them. Maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. Get yeah, hacker yeah. man. Hacker man can sort this one out. Um, yeah, like there's got to be something surely with enough time and effort. 
Um, Lathawin says, my three fiddy for people I love and respect. <laughs> Thank you for your three fiddy. <laughs> Uh, Stephen Simmons, <laughs> sorry, it's just taking me back to that fucking South Park episode. <laughs> God damn it, monster! You leave my family alone. Uh, Stephen Simmons, to me, Venom and how they portray both the symbiote and Brock is the perfect example of them feminizing and neutering fan favorite source material. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go see it until the 16th, so I don't know about Venom two yet. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> I think I'm going to wait for free to tell me if I should even bother. Right. Um, yeah, I have no idea if it's going to be good or what. Uh, but apparently it's about the love affair between Brock and, and uh, Venom. Oh, so thank goodness. Uh, Darna 1804 says, Bond isn't a relic. A guy running around sleeping around was a creep in the early 60s too. It was just understood that the women were whores. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, they were into him, yeah. Apart from Honor Blackman in in um, Goldfinger, I think she she definitely didn't seem to want him, but he just he just went for it. Um, as as oh, yeah, the, he was he was forward as fuck, Bond, you know. Yeah, um, as as the saying goes, fifty no's and a yes is still a yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Spike in madness says when you sometimes when you use something as a platform, you end up stepping all over it. Yeah, that's very true. Very true, my friend. Uh, John Platt says, Hail Drinker and guest hosts, uh, here's a small donation towards your channel as your reviews have helped me decide films to see or not watch at theatres. Damn, I feel the weight of responsibility like on my shoulders now. Uh, but thank mm -hmm. you for the donation, man. Brandon Cassinelli, King Warrior Magician Lover by Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette is a fantastic visit into the male psyche and archetypes. Uh, oh, okay, that'll be an interesting one to look at then. Justice Man, White beard from One Piece. Uh, that's all I got there. Uh, Taylor, haha, says we got Bill and Ted for our heroes. Well, I mean, what better heroes can you ask for, really? Exactly. Uh, Uber B Man says I'm not suggesting the film version per se, but even Optimus Prime from the original Transformers is an optimistic, strong role model. <laughs> yeah, he's not really male though, is he? He's, he's a robot. Um, Marksman of One Seventeen B says. You have to look to anime for heroes. Oh, all might the hero who embodies Superman more than modern day Superman and was created as a love letter to heroes. Um, so all might apparently is what he's called. Um, I will say like, cause I kind of want to do something for it, but like train to Busan, like I hate how long it took me to see that film, but I mean, it's really cool that, um, cause I was watching it with Fringy for the first time. And when he when he closes the door on two people that like a pregnant woman and a guy who's done nothing but be good, I was just like, "Wow, that's bold of you to make our main character an asshole." Like, yeah. and then uh, if you remember, the person who shouts at him to close the door is the person who ends up closing the door on him later in the film. Yeah, that that and, asshole um, businessman, isn't it? And he gets loads of people, really good people, killed. And our hero at that point in the movie, like a good hour and twenty minutes, grabs him and says, "Like, we could have saved so many more people." And it's just yeah. like. Oh, what a great fucking arc, man. Like, classic. You just go from being selfish to being selfless. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's, uh, that guy that he leaves in there with his, like, pregnant wife, that guy is absolutely the MVP of the movie. Oh, he's a legend. Just fucking awesome. Um, I need Dude, uh, the, the part that I completely fell in love with him is when he's trying to jump onto the train with him at the train station, and he starts to move away, and as a viewer, you're like, wait, what? He picks yeah. up a baton and a shield, and then he just fucking wrecks three zombies that are running toward him, and just like, okay, yeah. I love this guy now. Yeah, um, and you know the bit where they have to like fight their way through the carriage, and um, he, you know they're wrapping the the magazines around them and duct taping it and stuff. Yeah, um, and he he gives just a really good um, speech to the main character, where he's like, "You're a father, aren't you?" And he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "You know, we we get a lot of shit." And we're we're just expected to get on and take it and um, you know and make do. Uh, and I just and thought that was a great insight into his outlook. Whereas, like, he kind of knows that he's expendable and like he accepts that as his his, his fate job in life. Yeah, um, just, and just and an awesome guy. And he says your daughter will understand like how you work so hard for her eventually. Yeah, really good stuff. Yeah, uh, again. Could you imagine a, a character in a Hollywood movie saying that now? No. <laughs> Just no. No. Uh, and is it any wonder that we get drawn to like these these South Korean films where it's like, yeah, you're actually giving people what they want? Um, well, I, you know, I miss my human beings in my storytelling and 
I've watched a lot of foreign stuff recently where I've been like, fuck, man, this is, this is good. I'm liking this. Yep. Um, it's just just different culture, just different way of making movies, different way of storytelling. Um, there's the, yeah, people are asking me, have you seen the Squidius Gamius? Uh, yeah, Mauler was just talking to me about this earlier, actually. So apparently it's good, and um, I'm really intrigued to watch it now. So yeah, I will absolutely be watching Squid Game, and um, yeah, I'll be in, I'll be excited to review it. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, like I guess learn about it anymore. I don't want to see any reviews or anything. I'm just gonna try and go into it fresh. Uh, what's the next one here? Uh, that that show, by the way, got a friend of mine who doesn't tear up at any movies. Typically, got got him. Ah, oh, got him. I love Squid, it when it gets people. Game. Yeah, it's like ah, <laughs> like it made you feel. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> uh, Chuck McDaniel says Cliff Booth. Um, are we are we talking about heroes here? Um, Alex Lilly, give me nine gr- nine British pounds. Thank you. They're the best kind of pounds. Yeah, S three Studios says Western media is pretty much screwed, but anime and manga has plenty of optimism and role models. Even though that doesn't really fix the problem, Uh, it doesn't. But I don't know if enough audiences turn away from Western media or Western movies, Western comic books, or whatever, and and seek out these things. Well, it's a pretty good lesson for the guys who write them in our neck of the woods. Yeah, maybe we're doing something wrong here. Maybe we should maybe we should be more like these guys. Um, I just hope they take the hint, really. Yeah. Uh, Human Kirk says, Hollywood abandoning heroes of any kind, not just male ones, is how it commits self-deletion and becomes irrelevant. People always find their inspiration. I, I think they do. Uh, and I think there's always there's always going to be the demand, and I think ultimately someone's going to provide the supply. If it's not Hollywood, it'll be someone else. I completely agreed. Um Brett Cohen says, it's not a gas mask, it's an anti-woke bad story and plot inhibitor. <laughs> Keeps you safe, Mauler, doesn't it? Well, I'm bursting out of it this month, so I don't know what happened. I must have watched too much shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All-terrain nation. Chris is the man. Drinker is a beast and Mauler is epic. Well, what more can we say to that? That's pretty Thank good. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jay Broski says, I failed mine because of another driver who cut me off while t- making a turn. What a fucking asshole! The instructor even said, uh, I did well, but the turn was not good. Failed by one point. Anyway, hail to you, fine gentlemen. Yeah, fucking still hurts that I failed my first driving test. There it is. I didn't use, apparently, I didn't use my mirrors enough. Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get on, man? Did you did you get through yours uh, first time, or did you have, to, you have to do it again, or what? Oh, I thought you were aware of the law. I, I do not drive. <sighs> The gas mask man does not drive. I was I was told that uh, <laughs> this is, we had a stream where uh, Ada was just like she found that out. She's like, but all grown ups drive. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> uh... <laughs> the, the, yeah, the thing is, we don't live in America where you're like 500 miles from anywhere it, else. Um, everything I need is like a 10 minute walk. I just there's just no. It just costs me money. That's it. <laughs> uh, wow, well, you're saving yourself. Yeah, like you say, you're saving a ton of money. Mola rides his dragon. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Brie Larson's deformed toes says uh, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she, she had deformed toes were a fan of your channel. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, they, do, they don't make kids' movies like they used to. Never ending story, labyrinth, dark crystal. Uh, these had genuinely scary moments, couldn't be made now. Uh, I didn't really think of those as kids' movies. Oh, I'm sorry? Uh, well, Never Ending Story, Labyrinth, Dark Crystal. Wow. Maybe Dark Crystal, actually, but Labyrinth. Um... They're a different era of kids' movies. Because, like, you know, Return to Oz is like a kids' movie, but if you watch it, you're like, fucking hell, this is a kids' movie? And you're like, yes, quote unquote. Yeah, like the Dorothy getting sent for electroshock therapy because she's fucking nuts. <laughs> yes. Her- <laughs> and then those things with bicycle wheels for arms and stuff. The wheelers, Jesus. man. The wheelers. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the lads cover that for the, maybe next Halloween because we got too much to do this one. But uh I mean, well, yeah, that's that's how you do a sequel, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's, crazy, it's, that shit real. it's a sequel to like the most 
like almost the iconic film of film, you know, The Wizard of Oz. It's like, ah, movies. And you just like you watch that, you're like, geez, fuck Christ, what happened? You're like, well, <laughs> you know, just changing it up a little bit. That that's true. They really did. Um, Human Kirk says, Chris, you you need to make Gary a smeghead. Um, is he Gary? Must have seen Red Dwarf, surely. Um, I remember. That's some of the kind of thing you would have seen, though. Yeah, I mean, if he's into Doctor Who, he's got to be into Red Dwarf. I refuse to accept such a, a scenario otherwise. <laughs> um, Rust in Peace says, is the plan to have a Jane Bond now? Um, I genuinely don't know. I wouldn't be surprised, because if you kill off Bond as a character, then you can replace him with anyone, really. And, yeah, um, and they, this, is the, this is unprecedented. They've killed James Bond, not like... Like, they were specific. But then they said James Bond will return, so fucking, I don't know. Yeah. A, a person who has assumed the James Bond name will come back in some way. Yeah, I don't know, fucking know. It was certainly, yeah, I don't know. Sassamatas says, Hey, old drinker, love these streams and keep up the great work. Also more, get Chris on EFAP to play Gartic Phone. Sure. <clears throat> right, Lord Pepsi says, Director Doug Lemon always wanted to direct a Bond movie, but was rejected because of English director tradition, so he went on to make The Bourne Identity. Well, fucking hell. Um, Damn. We kind of went full circle with that then because Bond start emulating Bo uh, the Bourne identity. So, wow. You got the last thing, man. Bond doesn't really have an identity anymore. No. Generic spy man. That, that's, yep. that's what we got. Um, Micah D2 says, just want to remind everyone that the first bikini-clad woman on the big screen was in Dr. No. Love you, drinker. Great show. Glad you took over Thursdays. Thank you. Thursdays are now mine. They're drinker's yeah. day. But yeah, um, what the fuck was her name again in Doctor No? The Ursula Andress. Yeah, the, I can't remember. Comes out the the water. Uh, mm -hmm. What a what a beauty, <laughs> Jesus! Yeah, they don't make them like that anymore. Um, runs with scissors says, "Have you watched Power Station scene in B Boy Bobby? An engineering level in Matrix One? I'm telling you, this is where they got the idea for the Matrix from. Fight me! Uh, no, I haven't seen uh, Bobby yet." People have been talking to me about it non-stop, so apparently I've got to watch this fucking movie. Um, as I understand it, it's like a guy in Australia who's been like locked in his house for like most of his life. Um, I think he convinced himself that he can go outside or something, so he spent like thirty years in his in his home, just holed up in there, mm. and then he finally gets out, and he's a bit nuts. Uh, so I must watch it. Master Clockwork says the Jurassic Park franchise should have died with Michael Crichton. Talk about pissing on someone's legacy. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you would disagree with that, would you? Well, it, we're at the point now where it's just like a joke. The whole thing is a joke. The marketing being like, can what would happen if dinosaurs live with humans? And the real, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what the first one already answered this? Yeah, yeah, because it was it was along the lines of like this film answers the question of like, could dinosaurs and humans live safely side by side? And the answer is no. No fucking shit. <laughs> like, we're all we've very had, like five movies that have told us this. Yes, it's it's so shitty. Like Fallen Kingdom, man. That yeah, I mean, a disaster of a film. It's still a film when it gets brought up. The rags is like he just reminds us all of the gun that a, a, puts a laser on a person. You press a button and it will tell a dinosaur to go and kill that person. A gun that you aim at someone to yeah. tell a dinosaur to go kill them. Like what the fuck? You know what's more effective than a dinosaur? <laughs> a bullet. <laughs> And it's cheaper, more efficient, and easier. Like it's that film is so far <laughs> of its own ass. It's hilarious. Do you remember the scene where the bad guy is like, they used rats in World War Two in order to blah blah blah. So therefore, we've used animals before. Therefore, let's use Velociraptors in like fucking overseas wars. You're like, are you insane? <laughs> like, yeah. It it was like in, in Jurassic World where the the raptors are running through the jungle and they've got like GoPros strapped to their heads or something. Yeah, um, the evil military man's like, "Oh man, I wish the, we had these puppies in Tora Bora." <laughs> it's like, yeah, but like, you can still kill them with a gun. Yeah, like, they're not... one pistol shot. That's all it takes to knock out Blue in uh, Fallen Kingdom, if you remember. Yeah, they're they're well, as you said yourself, they'd be shit in a war. It, they would be, they would be shit in a war. Yeah, absolutely. I just love a movie if you you actually got to saw the results of this, like 
you know, um, in the opening to the Suicide Squad, where like they they try to send in the superheroes against guys with guns, and you've got like detachable <laughs> arm man just getting shot up and stuff. You just get to see dinosaurs try to like make a charge across no man's land and just get mown down by the dozen. <laughs> yeah, oh like, no, this was a horrible idea. Fucking D Day, and they're just trying to climb like the mini gun just goes through them all. They're like, wait, this isn't working, and it costs us loads of money. Oh my god. Yeah, the Germans are like, ah, this feels almost unfair. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they sending dinosaurs? That's very strange. <laughs> anyway, let's have some schnapps, yeah. Mm. Uh, what's the name? Yeah, Zach Zalak says, forgot to add the quotes uh, to Tuxedo. The thing nobody wants to see anymore. Do you think the Bond franchise is establishing a Doctor Who-style regeneration saga? If so, may I suggest oh. Bond Who? Oh, yeah, don't don't even suggest it. Because, you know, Doctor Who did this right from the beginning. As soon as they had to change actors, it's like, well, they established a reason for it. And it, I guess it fits with the character. He's like a crazy space alien. You know, who knows what they, they do when they die. But, like, last time I checked, Bond's just a human being. Um, you, you can't just have him regenerated to someone else. Um, and, yeah, the, the moment you just have a whole new character take on that mantle of, um, of Bond... Like it, it just takes all the history away. It's, it's a different person now. Why would I care about them? Yeah. Shit idea. Uh, Curtis D of Montana says Hollywood needs a Rod Sterling again, one of the greatest science fiction writers and great storytellers ever. Yeah. Uh, Rod Sterling, yeah. So the guy who did the, the Twilight Zone. So. Uh, great Cthulhu says, guys, don't look at the new Lower Decks pictures. <laughs> have you seen there, these? Yeah. What have they done oh. to Star Trek, man? I honestly feel like fucking um, Don Corleone. Like, what? <laughs> the car they massacred my boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, it's just hard to. We were going over this. Like, what are you supposed to say is to make fun of it when it's already maximum? You know? Yeah. I mean, I know it's it's a cartoon and it's like a, a tongue in cheek version of Star Trek. But man, there's there's tongue in cheek and then it's just straight up like, yeah, we're gonna mock the very basis of our own show. Um. Dan Levitt, Bangkok Wolves, says, Good early morning from Thailand. I'm going to the cinema with my girlfriend this week. Is 007 worth watching in honeymoon seats with a cup of soda? Or should I just sit my fat arse with a beer and watch it at home? I'd, I'd go for watching it at home if you can, if yeah. you can sail the high seas. If you're a huge Bond fan, brace yourself, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you have my sympathies. Benjamin Gaskell says, any plans for a discussion or a review of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, one of the most heartfelt, brilliantly realized stories from a never-to-return era of filmmaking. Pure art, wishing you all well. Yeah, I mean, these these classic movies from, like, the, the 60s and 70s, like, man, it's... I just can't see us getting films like that again. Really. Yeah, I mean, I was thoroughly impressed by that film when I watched it. It's like a fucking nine-year-old or whatever i remember being just like fuck that was good mm. yeah sometimes i look back at that and it's like i was spoiled wasn't i like watched too many good movies in a row so now i'm jaded <laughs> like, yeah. Just, like, yeah. the rest of them suck yeah <laughs> um xsl says thoughts on uh one minute terminator end in mark 11 tournament or sorry mortal kombat 11 tournament um i haven't seen the the terminator ending so i don't actually know yeah another way uh, so I, I couldn't comment on that, man. Um, Eldritch Blasted says, these creatively and morally bankrupt turds killed beloved series like Star Wars and Star Trek, and now their ilk are moving on to anime, Cowboy Bebop, and video games, Resident Evil. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, it, it's weird, right, when I think about video games, because um, the the last video I did was a review of like the, the remake of Final Fantasy VII, and it got me thinking about the kind of games I was playing back then. Um, and it was, it was things like Resident Evil, then Tomb Raider, then Final Fantasy VII, then Metal Gear Solid, like games that have just become absolutely iconic. Like again, just like movies, I feel like I was spoiled back then. Like every every few months, you would just get another incredible game that's like spawned a huge franchise, um, and they were just popping up like that back then. The the creativity and the 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 enjoyment to be had then was just unbelievable. I just feel like, you, again, like with movies, you don't get that anymore. The good ones are really hard to find now. 
Um, Dirty Nerdy says, when are you going to review the rest of the Star Trek movies? Yeah, fuck. Um, I've been avoiding this because <laughs> I've done happy hours on like all the the first six Star Trek movies. And they're all good in their own way. Maybe not five so much, but um, they were all fun to talk about. And I just think when, I, when it comes to talking about the TNG movies, it's going to be a bit less positive um, because they were kind of all just dumb action movies. Um, that's set in space. Like you've not seen any of them, really, have you? Mm, the only ones I've seen are the two. Well, there's three J.J. Abrams ones. I've seen the first two. I, I would be really interested to watch, say, Star Trek Two with you, like the Wrath of Khan. Um, I'd be, I'd be interested to get you, like, your reaction, kind of coming into it as someone who doesn't know too much about Trek, just to see, like, the character development and the, the, the way it kind of deals with its, with its ideas. Um, yeah. I think you do. You probably get a lot out of it, actually. Even if you're not really into Star Trek, I think you'd still enjoy a film like that. Well, I do kind of want to watch all of Star Trek at some point because um, it's so influential for storytelling. You know? Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I think those those first six movies they just they really nailed the essence of Star Trek, and then you know, Next Generation kind of expanded upon it, um, and I think it just. They, they changed tack a little bit when those movies started coming out, but um, yeah, it'd be good to talk about them anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I know there's there's people out there, uh, probably Gary or Doomcock or whatever, they're quite into their Star Trek. Yeah. Ma Lurk says, um, when to go to learn, uh, sorry, where do you go to learn good story writing skills? Um, fuck, there, there's, a, there's a big question. I... I don't know about you, like when it, when it comes to putting together your own understanding of storytelling, like I just watched a lot of movies and I read a lot of books when I was a teenager and gradually formed my own opinions about how this stuff is done. Like I never took a single class, I never did creative writing or anything like that. I just kind of gradually figured it out, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about it a couple of times on EFAP before, but I, I usually associate with. Um... I think about like if you wanted a chair built, do you want it from um, a guy who's been learning all about carpentry in school and university for like 20 years? He hasn't touched a piece of wood, but he's read every single thing about it and watched all the videos and stuff. Or you could have a, a carpenter's son who's been doing it for decades, uh, well, the same amount of time in his workshop, and made loads of chairs in his life. And he's like, which one of those two do you want? And it's like, well, I probably want the guy who's fucking actually done it. Um, yeah. And I guess the equivalent I'm trying to say there isn't that um, we've made movies or anything, but I don't have the, um, you know, like the stuff you see a lot on these like video essays where they'll be like, I've got official training in, you know, media studies and I've done uh, video exploration groups and just, just all yeah. university courses and you're sitting there like, okay, but like, have, how many movies have you seen? I don't know. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. And then, yeah, I've watched um, an inhuman amount of movies. And I've just uh, come to conclude what I think works about them, what doesn't, and then gone from there. And the channel's where it is. So I I hope to be more of an example of, like, you don't have to go to university to be able to start writing stories. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I, I know you can you can always teach people the technicalities of writing, um, but I think the, the creative spark that, that drives a lot of writers like I don't think that's something you can teach I think some people have it and some people don't and yeah um, obviously it's frustrating because you might want it and you don't have it but um, it does kind of mean like you're in a position where you can kind of just see these things in stories you can you can understand the elements of them um, the more you see and then you start to yeah. put together Ah, okay I, I understand what you did there I understand how this story is told um, and once you start to spot the the, the hallmarks or the foundational elements of, of writing, uh, it's really easy to pick up. Uh, and once you get that ball rolling, then you, you, you get better and better at it. And yeah, like, uh, I guess, you know, you, you, <laughs> you've obviously built like a huge channel from doing that kind of thing. Um, I've, I've written like 10 novels uh, and, and, you know, done all right with YouTube as well. Like, you, you know, you, when you've got that feel for it and I guess you're able to um, express yourself reasonably well, um, people appreciate it. Yeah. Obviously, uh, writing the stuff definitely is going to help you out because you're you're extremely experienced with this at this point. And I was just going to say, like the um, the thing for me is I watch so many of them 
that when something happens, they'll just be like, oh, that's like that, that, that. And they execute it like as a nine there, as a six there, as a four there. There's ways to do it. There's ways to not. And some other people might be like, what are you referencing? What are all those things? It's like, oh, yeah, just, there's just loads of fucking movies, loads and loads of story. For And that, by the way, helps you get to the point of being like, oh, man, would it be interesting to mash up something like an Indiana Jones with zombies? You know, like, yeah. like a Western versus zombies? Like, well, maybe an adventurer versus... And you're like, oh, I don't know if that's been done before. And it's like, oh, what about zombies on a train? What about zombies <laughs> in medieval blah, blah, blah? And you might, these might seem simple, but then, you know, that's just a hook, and then you try and execute it. I was talking to you about this in the in the call we had, where I was just... um. I was sort of thinking about it with Fringy, with, with how hooks will bring us in, but then it's the job of the story to be like, right, I've got you, and I'm going to give you what the hook is, but if you will allow me, I'm going to introduce you to this character, I'm going to show you what their flaws are, what life they're going through, then I'll give you the hook that will actually go through it, and then I'm going to have it complete with this person's journey, and you'll find you don't actually care about the hook anymore, it was that person and that story. Yeah, and um, it's so interesting to think about because like some people will not give a story a chance unless the hook is interesting. Um, so there's this whole other dynamic to storytelling in terms of like marketing as well to get people to actually even consume it. There, I mean, there used to be that that whole high concept idea back in mm -hmm. the '90s where you would be like, uh, in the wake of something like Die Hard, say that was a, a unexpectedly massive success. And yeah. then suddenly it's like, okay, we're going to do Die Hard on a boat. You know, we'll do a new siege, <laughs> or we'll we'll do Die Hard on a plane. You've got Air Force One. You know, that you take that simple idea uh, and you know you try and put a different spin on it. But like you say, you can do any of these things, even if it's a, a well-worn trope, like say, you know, a, a gunslinger walking into some no-name town in the Wild West um, to to dispense justice his way. You know, that's been done a billion times already, but it doesn't matter if you've got amazing characters that are well written or a really, you know, cool story. Um, you can make it work and you can draw people in. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with taking tried and tested elements and just, uh, you know, doing yeah. it well. Um, when I was watching uh, Train to Busan with, with Fring, and I, I don't mean to repeat stuff you probably talked to Rakita about in the stream you did there, but. We were watching it and like they introduce, you know, you've got you missed her recital. She's uh, a little bit distant with the dad. He almost forgot her birthday. He's got her something that she already has. Like Fringy when he was watching with me was like, ah, so those two are going to connect quite a bit over the course of this zombie movie, aren't they? It's like, yeah, of course, that's yeah. what we're heading for. And uh, and they do and they do it really well. Yeah. And, th and there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's, you know, it's, it's what just, I think. It, it's like it's the heart a, of the movie in a way, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I, uh, I sort of you know, a workaholic father reconnecting with his estranged daughter uh, through through shared adversity. Yeah, you know, it's a simple premise, but man, if you if you do it right, um, and it, it appeals to that that universal kind of um, human experience. Like, there, everyone's either been that guy, or like they've they've known someone like that, or they've had a father like that, and so everyone can relate to it. It's a simple idea, but then you you, you use that to kind of draw people in it's it's not hard um and it's almost like now we we're so desperate to try and find something new that we we end up drilling down into things that don't even work anymore just to try and subvert it and i and i desperately try to give like good faith to the, these new iterations in like the marvel movies and stuff but they just ain't doing it like you look at shang chi and they explicitly tell you in his first conversation with those people he's like like do you not know what you want to do with your life and they're both like hmm then he spends the whole film being bopped around by everybody else. Yeah. And then he ends up being like one of the most powerful heroes ever. And I was just like, I don't know what the journey was here. I don't know what he learned. Yeah. This this is the the setup and payoff that I, I talked about just recently, where you know the, there's no real thought put into like establishing things that are going to carry through the rest of the film. It's just doing whatever seems right at the time. Um, and it's just the hallmark of just total amateurish writing. From yeah. people that should know, like they they should know better, and they should be taught to do better, but they haven't. Um, and it's just, yeah, I don't know if it's just hiring the wrong people or trying to teach people the wrong lessons or trying to like work too many conflicting elements in, and they just lose sight of what they're trying to do. It's because uh, yeah, there's just loads of little things you can pick up from um, the efforts the writers make, and uh, when they get to that train station. And the zombies turn out to be there, and they all start running back. And it shows. I'm just going to call him Chad because I don't know what his name is in the film. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah, perfect name. He saves main character's daughter, and then he gets everyone through the doors and locks them while our character hasn't got to them yet. And I was like, oh man, they just flipped the scenario from the beginning of the film. 
And uh, Chad doesn't hesitate, opens it right up and says, come on, get in here, sort of thing. Yeah. There's a difference in these people. And again, just giving our character something to think about. I was just like, I love I love this stuff. Give me more of this. Mm-hmm. Just simple, co- consistent storytelling. Which is why, and like I said, uh, with The Suicide Squad, one of the better superhero movies we've gotten in a while, and it's not even that great because of the, the writing, and it could be way better, but the characters, man, just like, I just want characters back. Yeah. yeah. People that you, you just like and you connect with and you you empathize with it, it shouldn't be that hard to create people like that but it's like they they seem to do everything to to undermine it <laughs> in so many movies now yeah uh, night king 01 says roadhouse might be the greatest guilty pleasure greatest line ever pain don't hurt <laughs> roadhouse is a great film it's just fun like i, I miss just fun movies like that uh, fun is fun <laughs> yeah when the redneck says, after seeing this, I couldn't help but think of the Rich Evans quote. How does it feel to be old enough to watch all your favorite franchises go down in flames? At least watching guys helps with the pain. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. It's, it's Do you the, have, um, what's what's like the one that hurt you the most? <laughs> Just say that in a quick way. Uh, in terms of all my different franchises that have died. Bur- burning to death, yeah. Which one's the one that... I mean... Like Star Trek has died a slower death, but like Star Wars is probably the one that that went down in the most spectacular fashion. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it would pr- it would probably be that I would say. Yeah, TLJ is still up there. That's one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Um I reckon that's, that's that's one of the few movies that I've come out with out of and and genuinely felt just kind of down, just really bummed yeah. out, and just like, oh Christ, what have I just seen? What what has gone on? I feel like there's more and more of them now than they like they were in the era of that. There's been a lot of it. Yeah, and like Terminator's gone just as bad, but like that kind of it's almost like that had been laid low by a combination of incompetence and lack of ideas. Um, it wasn't so much like modern disastrous writing. Um, it had already kind of fallen before Dark Fate came along. So I yeah, Genesis. Is like almost as bad as Dark Fate, but I do I do think Dark Fate edges it out by destroying Sarah Connor, which is like wow. Yeah. Two and the three had the had the decency to say, "Look, she died." Okay, off screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and Dark Fate had uh, Amelia Clark doing a really bad impression of Linda Hamilton, which we all tolerated, I suppose. Yeah. That yeah. was just yeah. It's like oh yeah, you tried. Well done. Come with me <laughs> if you want to live. Yeah. <laughs> firing guns and just actually being afraid of the gun that she was using like I could tell she was flinching every time she squeezed off a shot it was weird oh bless her heart she was told to do that I think right I, I when I see interviews with Amelia Clark, I believe that she's just she needs someone to actually put her in a role she can do instead of playing all these super strong women who are stoic and I shouty I, I just I don't know what her niche is I, I guess Romance She's super bubbly. Movies. It could be romantic comedies, I, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe just, you know, let her play characters that aren't Daenerys, because fuck me, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there's so many actors, actually, in, you know, from Game of Thrones, that they tried to they tried to transition into, like, yeah. A-list movie stars, and it just did not work. Um, I think there, there's, a, there's a big old difference between you know, doing a five-minute scene in Game of Thrones where you're playing off against probably, like, big character actors and stuff, like, really experienced people that you can hide behind and, like, carrying a whole movie by yourself. You know, just ask Sophie Turner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, Alfie says, a few quid from a fellow Celt for a pint of whiskey from Northern Ireland. All hail the nerds. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Um... Snow Miser, can you make a video about Deliverance? I could. I couldn't show half the footage from it, unfortunately. Uh, but I definitely could. Uh, Grimy says, I'm doing Sober October. It's not as hard as I thought, but I miss the smooth taste of a fine whiskey. That does sound pretty hard in that case. Sober October. Who the fuck thought of that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no month is sober for me. Keaton Jones says, my guilty pleasure is the entire Tremors franchise. I mean, I love the first one. The, the second one, yeah, it's got its I've only seen the first one. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, the second one's all right. It's got Fred Ward back. 
So hmm. it does have that. But then after that, I think they, they pretty much go downhill rapidly. Um, Brenton Palmer says, drinker at UNAS, hot shots, happy hour. When? We'll we'll get it done. We'll get happy hour done with, with hot shots. I fucking love those movies. I actually think I like hot shots too more. Um, I don't know if you've seen either of them, Mahler, but... No, I don't think so. Oh, you've got to watch hot shots, honestly. Um... I'm try- I don't even know what to compare it to. Like probably the airplane movies. Oh, yeah, I think it's done by the same people, similar kind of humor. But like, yeah, they take a gun. Yeah, yeah. So they lampoon Top Gun and then like the Rock. The, sorry, the Rambo films, um, and they're just great fun. Really good. Um, Actually, Charlie um, Sheen is awesome in them. Did you ever watch the scary movies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. I remembered a joke from them because we were talking about uh, something to do with a slasher movie, and I was showing Fringy and Rags like. Some of the jokes, and they were laughing their asses off of them. I was like, "Shit, man! I maybe I should rewatch these because I think they are kind of funny. At least the at least the first one, a little bit on the second one, and I remember like in the third one as well. The yeah, the, <laughs> I love the bit where they they lampoon Tom Cruise on Oprah, and he's it's like he grabs Oprah's hands and just like twists them backwards. <laughs> um, yeah, like the, the scary movie. Yeah, they were good actually. There was genuinely some good jokes in it. Um, the um, the part I showed them, I don't know if you remember it. The the first one's about making fun of Scream. Yeah, and um, if you remember, Ghostface is chasing her in her house, and she starts running up the stairs, and her stairs are enormous. They're like a set, and it's clear because they they got it to make a make jokes. And like Rags immediately knows, like, why is there a bicycle on the stairs? There's just a bicycle, <laughs> and she just grabs it and throws it at Ghost Face. And he's like, Ah, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> she keeps on running up, and there's a granny, and she's like, Oh, hello, dear. And she goes, Sorry, grandma, and just throws her at Ghost Face. <laughs> and like, Ghost Face is running up the stairs. And he looks back at the grandma, like, if she's okay <laughs> after being thrown. <laughs> and then she throws, there's a piano at the top of the staircase for no reason at all. And she throws that at Ghostface, and he runs off. He's like scared of it and runs away. And then it just hits the grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my favorite moment in the first movie is when when uh, Anna Faris is having sex for the first time. And oh yeah, the, the, <laughs> the dude's like he's about to come, and he just goes like, "Oh shit!" And like the whole room starts shaking. <laughs> <laughs> They were they were genuinely good movies. Like fucking yeah, I was I was thinking would it be funny for Rags to see Scream because he hasn't seen that back to back with Scary Movie just as a sort of oh he's not a seen different Scream. Era. No, I, look, it's my job to let the EFAP people. They're all good with gaming. They've played a shit ton of games. Their film ness is is a little bit lacking. It was funny when I met Rags. He'd seen like what MCU movie? These these fucking youngins, honestly. Like. <laughs> Not seen a movie like Jay, who's seen like three films in her entire <laughs> life. Like, oh god, what watched Fellowship and stopped by the yeah. way. <laughs> it's like, I'll this will do. This is my experience of films, and it's funny because Fellowship is the one I cite where it's like, oh, what a great ending, simultaneously hooking you in to definitely want more because there's just loose ends everywhere. Yeah, terrible, 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 but, I mean, terrible. Yeah, to to Christ, I'm gonna I'm gonna review fucking Scream now. Um, do it. Yeah, I remember back in high school watching that, and like, yeah, everyone was talking about it. It's just like, yeah, it's fucking cool. Like, it, it, um, it rescued the horror genre for a bit because yes, really horror did. was dead. Uh, slashes ran out, and that was it. I don't know if it started this weird trend of subverting everything, though. Like, did, did it yeah. all start with Scream? I don't know. Maybe. Um, maybe. I'll watch well, yeah, that with but, you if you want. Uh, if you want to do that, I, I totally go for it. Yeah, I, I'd be. I'd love that. Um, what's the next one here? Exotic Player says, Hail Drinker and Mauler, what do you think of Ex Machina? Uh, for me, one of the more intelligent sci-fis, but our, Alex Garland's Annihilation was pretty bad. Yeah, so, no argument there. So Alex Garland, right? I watched Ex Machina, and I was like, fuck, this guy knows what he's doing. Then I watched, um, fuck, what was the one you just referenced? The Annihilation. Yeah, I hate that movie. <laughs> like, yeah. What the hell happened? Dude, the dialogue in that film is absolute ass. I don't know. I don't understand because Ex Machina's dialogue is actually pretty solid. Um, yeah. I have to check like the production of them or something. But I was like, okay, so you know, he hit and miss. That's fine. Then I don't know if you've seen it, but I watched his show Devs. Have you seen that? No, I didn't see that. I hate that show too. It's about determinism, and it has no idea what it's talking about. Um, 
and again, dialogue, characters, all garbage. And so now I'm like, man, was X Machina a fucking fluke? I, uh, I hope sometimes not. You get that. Yeah, sometimes you get it. Something like first first big movie, like they put all their effort into that, and then they they can never equal it. Uh, but yeah, I had no time for Annihilation. I thought it was a fucking disaster of a film. Um, no idea what it was trying to say. Um, the only like people keep talking about like oh yeah but the bear scene was really good I'm like yeah okay that was a that was a freaky scene with the, the bear that could talk but like that was that was like five minutes of the film the rest of it was just garbage yeah I yeah. Uh, I think really like ages ago like early EFAB, I watched the film Wolf and we both concluded like fuck the bear scene is great everyone should watch that on YouTube other than that though stay the fuck away from the movie yeah uh, Gunstar1 says, Drinker and Mauler, what more could you ask for? What are both of your plans to review Dune when it comes out? Review Dune? Yeah. I don't know That'll if you'll be, be doing it, but... What's Dune? Dune. Oh, Dune! Sorry, oh, no. my Scottish <laughs> accent. Dune! Uh, for a second there, I was like, um, the month. I was like... Yeah. Is the... <laughs> well, Dune's a reasonably good month, I would say. It's like, yeah, middle of summer. Uh, yeah, I... I'm not the person to review Dune, really. I'll watch it and tell you what I thought of it, but you won't see, you won't see a video from me because I, I just I feel like I, I'm just so out of the loop on Dune. I haven't even seen the um the David Lynch movie in so long. I don't remember any of it. Yeah, uh, it's probably better that you don't remember the David Lynch movie. To be fair, that's what um, I hear. <laughs> I I yeah, I will be watching it and reviewing it. So um, yeah, it doesn't come out here until the twenty first or the twenty second. So I'm gonna have to wait till then, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I'll give my thoughts then. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope it's good. Uh, Douglas Burton says, I feel like modern writers are being taught that timeless archetypes, particularly male, are actually dangerous dangerous stereotypes, and they're just wrong. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, there's, there's a reason that archetypes endure. Um, there's a reason that James Bond as a character has endured since, like, the 1960s, you know, his first movie appearance. People still love him. People look back on Sean Connery, and they're like, yeah, cool as fuck. And he's... And he's you know, a character who's like 50 years old. There's not many characters that have that kind of staying power because certain archetypes just work and they're always going to work. Um, I don't think many people are going to look back on Daniel Craig and be like, yeah, that, that, that was an awesome interpretation of Bond. I think all you'll get is people being like, oh, I guess you know Royale. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. yep, yep. That was it, yeah. James McDonough, drinker, my fellow Scotsman. It's great to hang out with some independent thinkers. I really enjoy winding down with you guys. Thank you. And uh, we enjoy winding down with you, James. Yeah. Uh, Nate A says, you fan of slashers? Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy? Who doesn't love a slasher movie? Um, I so my I think I don't know if we talked about this, but like my favorite slasher is probably Predator, <laughs> if we can call it that. Well, it he does kill kind people. Of, it kind of, you know, fits the fits the bill. And um, that's my preference for uh, slashes. I just, I'm really, I get bored of like this standard formula of a bunch of college students, sex is happening and then they get killed because they walk off on their own. Uh, their phones don't work. They, their car's out of fuel. They fall in places. I just, like, it gets boring for me. But Predator was amazing because it's a bunch of competent, intelligent people getting killed by something that's way more advanced than them. Yeah. Um, brilliant film and yeah like that that nails it like they actually make smart decisions throughout the film and they, they they take reasonable steps to combat this thing as they understand it um what a what a change of pace um, yeah man we, we we kind of said before like the way this movie transitions from like action movie to slasher flick to survival horror you know it does all of those things and it does it seamlessly in a screenplay that's not particularly long and there's not an ounce of bloat anywhere in it it's just a great example of good writing it, it didn't do as uh, predator like a lot of classic movies it's, it's, like if it, it was that's something i've always wanted to know you know we were just talking about like films that were delayed by 50 years imagine predator came out today because legally that's just how it was made or something i'd really be curious how the world reacts to it yeah um they, they, i think their their main question would be like why is everyone in this so insanely buff <laughs> <laughs> well, it would immediately get banned too because some of the stuff they say is uh, you're not allowed to say anymore. Oh God, yeah, um, yeah. Well, what is it, all the pussy jokes and everything? Yeah, it's, it's like, <laughs> God, I miss action movies like that. You know, I miss them like they were gory. Everyone's swearing all the time. They're smoking. Like they're they're just making really crude jokes and stuff. Like that's what you want. 
That's the, the manliest the fucking handshake in film history. <laughs> yeah. I take it you've seen the 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 spoof of that, like you know, when someone's into cut scenes from like uh, 2012, like they they slap their hands together and like a big nuclear explosion. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful, uh, but with all that's, of, I was just gonna say quick. That's that's the thing about that movie. Like they're all really because you're making me think about. Oh yeah, Dylan, the character who tricks the main team to coming under false pretenses because he's trying to find out what happened to his team that he cares about. Yeah. Um, and the it at first makes everyone distrust him because he's like a pencil pusher, but it turns out it's like no, he is an actual fighter. He's been here before, and he will fight for this team as well as his uh, previous one. Yeah, and so he comes through for the. And yeah, he, you know, he's not quite got it. He, he initially. gets himself killed trying to help out the one character that fucking hates him the most. Yeah. Um, and that's that's one character, and there's a whole cast of them. And I just I don't get it. Like it's like this a lot of people view predators like, oh, it's that action movie with the aliens trying to kill him, right? And it's like it's a lot more than that, script wise, just saying. Yeah. Um yeah. really just really concise, really efficient writing. Where it tells you a huge amount about every character with very little dialogue. Um, and yeah. Very little time. It's just, yeah. Isn't it, isn't it great that they could do stuff like that thirty years ago and they can't do it now? Um, but with all these slasher movies that you're referencing, like Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy, like it's pretty much like the first installment of all of those those franchises was great, and then they just went into parody eventually. Um, yeah, but it's right, and it's what I worry about for everything that's good and new. I'm like, oh god, what's going to happen to you? Yeah. Um, Douglas Burton says the drinker is the natural choice to replace Daniel Craig as Bond. Well, obviously, yeah. Clearly, yeah, I'm yeah. in Bond shape. Um, and Mahler sounds like the perfect Bond villain. Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You've got to keep the gas mask on, though. Um, Sluggy Slurm says, hey, drinker and Mahler, random one here. Have either of you seen the movie Murder by Death? Um, hilarious flick with great one-liners and an amazing cast. Even then, they were getting into bad writers. Or sorry, getting on to bad writers. Uh, I've never seen Murder by Death. No, I, I don't know, man. No, I've not seen it. Uh, George Kessler, give me five five dollars. So thank you. Uh, Jesse says she's a baby. Sorry, she's a man baby. Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, a scene you would never be allowed to do now. Uh, no. George Kessler, hey drinker, first time you've seen your channel uh, live. Uh, much love. Have you thought about doing something with Voxus Productions? Yeah, people keep asking me about this. Um, I'll need to have him on. He's a bit elusive, but uh, he did pop on for 150, so I'm assuming he's still around doing some stuff. Yeah. Um, Mika D2 says, please, guys, stay a while. We love the long streams. Well, we, we did our best that night. That was like four hours. Okay. How far are we doing? To how, how, Oh, we're at an hour-ish right now, right? This is, yeah, and this is literally the last of the old Super Chats. Uh, there we go. I do think that a few more have come in. More <laughs> of course. It's like trying to dance your way out of quicksand, honestly. It's just impossible. Yep. Um, sorry, Micah D2 says, please, guys, stay well. Uh, yeah, we love long streams. Um, and then it, that, was, that was the end of the old ones. And that brings us on to just the stuff that's come in tonight as we've been going. Uh, do you have time to go through some of these? Or? Yes, sir. All right, nice one, man. Uh, the Craig Lee Lawrence experience says, oh, damn, fam, the boys are back in town. Yeah, we are. It's a Sunday night and we're partying hard. Yeah. Stephen S., that hoppy, hoppy texture. Hey. Uh, <laughs> lovely Lena says, have you seen the TV show Barry? It's so damn good with Bill Hader in it, and it has two awesome seasons. It's on HBO. So uh, I've seen both seasons of Barry. I wish it were better, <laughs> but, like, is, uh, but I will say there was a scene in it that is so good. I showed it to uh, Rags and Metal because I was like, I won't recommend this show to you. I don't think it's worth the time, but this scene is so fucking good. I have to show you it. And uh, um, I, I was gonna, I was gonna give you the idea of the scene, but I'm wondering if like that's a bit spoilery. Um, the person who sent that probably knows what I'm talking about. It's um, the clue will be it's in a car. Uh, and um, I was just uh, floored by how well Bill Hader acts in it and um, just the writing for that moment. But I wasn't very impressed with the show overall. I didn't think it was as funny. The premise, by the way, is a hitman who decides he doesn't want to be a hitman anymore and he wants to become an actor. And, I, and like, Fringy told me that. And I was like, that sounds great. Uh, that's, that's a great little hook. There's so much you could do with that. Um, but I just wasn't 
super impressed with it. Uh, but I, I imagine that um, plenty of people would really enjoy it, so I wouldn't, you know, go as far as saying don't check it out. Uh, it just wasn't entirely for me. I think there's a third season now already. Hmm. Okay. Um, Daily Dose says, I love Mauler and hope Mauler loves me. I want to wrap my arms <laughs> around him and feel him inside me. What? Oh, no. that, was a, that, was also, that was a reference. Also, high rags and drinker. I was going to say I recognize it. I can't remember what it's from, though. <laughs> Uh, Steven S says, Inner Space, do it, do it. Yeah, Inner Space is a great film. I love it. Um, Nikki D says, Extraction was such a fun film. Loved Hemsworth character, but I'm a little leery of sequels. Uh, what would you guys want to see in the second film? Uh, just more fucking killing for like <laughs> yep. 90 minutes. So, yeah, just just keep doing what you're doing. You're, everything's fine about it. <laughs> Don't mess with it. Uh, Pale Horseman says, I highly recommend Kubo and the Two Strings as an overlooked gem. I yeah. enjoyed that a lot. It was a really neat movie. It's a stop motion animation. Ah, okay. Super cute movie. Uh, Robert Feldman says, Drinker, I asked you to review all Highlander films, knowing after one uh, they were, but like final season of Game of Thrones, something good came out of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've reviewed the first one. I don't know if I, I could bring myself to do the second. <laughs> Fucking hell, Highlander 2 is a, a task, like. Um but yeah, I, I it did it didn't seem like a story that you needed to continue. It felt like it kind of wrapped everything up pretty neatly with the first one. Um and everything beyond that was just a cash grab, but I don't know, man. Um what's the next one here? RRTNZ says, um Hail Drinker, Liquored Lord of Literature, Shmei Moller. Can you believe that Czech game? Um, Yicha Fee. Uh, anyway, love that Drinker takes time for these catch ups. Never change, mate. Have a beer I, on me. I think that was Welsh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Shamai is hello. <laughs> trying, to get a, trying to get a Scotsman to say Welsh is, is yeah, a that's, tough one. That's cruel. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what's Problem. the next one here? Um, Matt41174 says, have you seen Can You Review 23, the hacker movie with August Deal? Um, 23, I've never heard of it. No, I don't know about that, man. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that one. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Tana Roo says, here's some schmeckles for a drink or two and a toast for the drinker. Keep up the good work and I'm still mad at Kevin. My vagina hurts, Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he did a great job on on He Man. We love Kevin Smith, don't we? Someone in the Mel streams said that apparently Kevin Smith said Iron Man three was the first auteur film in the MCU. Oh fuck! It sake. fucking pisses me off so much. Like Iron Man is obviously the first one. It's it like <laughs> it created. I why do I even bother? Yeah, I think Kevin just says whatever comes into his head and he never bothers to check whether it lines up with reality. Um, Alyosha says, which scotch? Well, at the moment, I'm drinking the Ardmore, which is a nice Highland malt, which mm. is it's great. It's, it's pretty light on the peatiness, so it's easy to drink. Um, and it's going down smooth. Reggie1971 says, do you believe the theory that the character Sean Connery played in the movie The Rock is actually James Bond? Yes, I fucking do, with 100% <laughs> of my soul. Um, that that is the perfect um, sort of ending for that character, if that's the case. Yeah, hell yeah, I, the I, Rock. See, that's you know, like No Time to Die versus the Rock. It's just like the Rock's fucking awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like yes, but it's not as competently made, even in the script or the cinematography. But I just be like, ah, I don't know, man. I don't know how much that's worth over the experience. You know, it's just it's a fun movie. It's a hundred percent fun. Um, Connery's awesome in it. He plays great off Nick Cage. Um, Ed Harris is a great antagonist. Um, yep. The cinematography is great. Like the the writing's a bit all over the place, but like it looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, I I love watching The Rock. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, like Mason's just got some fantastic lines. Like <laughs> losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> yeah, it's only classic. only Sean could only Sean could deliver a line like that. Um. Zonked Ocean Gaming says, recommend Succession and 000. Also, great eye opening vids, and I hope you've learned with these shows. Have a great day. Well, have a great day to you, man. Thank you for that. And uh, 
Yeah, so succession and zero, zero, zero. Uh, Trevor Sumner says, have you guys read the Michael Crichton Jurassic Park novels? If so, do you believe The Lost World would have been received better if the movie had been closer to the book's extinction plot points? Uh, I've only read Jurassic Park. I've never read Lost World. Uh, I, uh, so I've, I've not read them, but I've always felt Jurassic Park, it was done. The story was completed. It was a really good story. Yeah. And if someone was like, yeah, but I'd like to see more dinosaur stuff, I'd be like, um... <laughs> Maybe we could make something else because, like, oh, god damn it, man. I really love Jurassic Park. I'm very protective of it. I feel like it should just be on its own. The rest of them are these horrible, scabby aliens that are trying to grab at its fame and success. So that they'll yep. never get there. They're only getting worse. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just really sad to see the direction it's going. But yeah, the first one was just, it captured real wonder at the, this idea that like dinosaurs could actually exist. And it made. You know, the, the special effects had gotten to the point where it kind of looked believable and real. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and... one of the most interesting things in the movie is an injured Triceratops, one that's just sick on the floor, not really moving. Now it's like a horde of all these genetic experiments yelling and tearing people apart. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I love watching Doctor. Uh, well, so you got Sam Neil just like resting on it, and it goes up and down with its breaths, and he's just fascinated by how big the creature is, and yeah. that it's life, and that it was extinct. And it's just like that's the wonder of Jurassic Park. I don't need the Indominus Rex going invisible and going off <laughs> radar and smashing helicopters. I'm just like, shut up! <laughs> it's so stupid. I uh, yeah, like the the scene where they see the uh, the, the Brachiosaurus for the first time. Yeah, you know, like in the car, and like you know, they hear the the footsteps thumping on the ground, and like you know, they're just staring at it in complete wonder. Um, it just that that's the that's the essence of what that film captures, and then the whole idea of them escaping um, from control. You know, it's almost like you know Frankenstein's created his creature, um, and it's broken free of his control, and it, it becomes this dangerous thing that's hunting him. Then you know, it's that. That yeah. classic idea of science going too far with with all this stuff, and they, they've done it with the belief that they could control everything, and they absolutely can. Like it's great, like classic themes to explore, I and mean, it does it such a great context. Yeah, absolutely. And thrown in as well the um the peak of like humanity's hunting, which is Muldoon, and he's defeated by the Velociraptors, and the argument is they've been perfected over like so many hundreds of thousands of years or whatever to be the top predators and like yeah even man is going to have trouble against this with yeah. a gun um there's so much that's nailed in the first one and the, and the rest of them just are like but money though and you're like yeah i know i know you want money yeah. go for it it's, it's like, like... And they make money and people like them I'm like yeah people are stupid <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like with Lost World, it's like, yeah, but it's got more dinosaurs in it, so it's more it better, right? It, yeah. <laughs> uh, Volcanicus Rex says, is Muppet Treasure Island the best film rendition of Treasure Island? I mean, I, Muppet's Christmas Carol is the best telling of, of, of a Christmas Carol, so yeah, clearly. Um, they, they nailed it. Um, Wormy Spoon says, could you watch uh, Ro, sorry, Roroni Kenshin live adaptation? Five movies, brilliant choreography and cinematography, good hero's journey story, also raised by wolves. Two different things there. Well, mm. six, really, if we could, five movies. Um, yeah. I, I need to watch Raised by Wolves, actually. I've never got around yeah, to I've it. Yeah, I've heard that a couple of times now. I haven't seen it, though. Um Ebenezer Adams says the Ethan Hawke film uh, Predestination. I find holes in plots, but I can't find any in that one. Ooh. There's challenge accepted. <laughs> uh, Milo Sorian says, greetings, guys. I would like to have your thoughts on the anime classic Gogo 13 uh, from the Bond perspective. Um, I'd, I'd love to give you my thoughts. I've never seen Gogo 13, man, so I don't yeah. know. I don't know about that one. Uh, Runs with Scissors says, I made the miniatures for Balin's Root. Took two months uh, and appears for four seconds by the way bad boy bobby is the first neo fight for me <laughs> uh damn right so you you actually took part in bail and drew that is fucking awesome mm. uh, and bad boy bobby is the very first neo fight i'm oh, sorry he's the first neo um yeah so it must be that he wakes up in some kind of dystopian future i guess um tommy wicks says love the content guys hope you're well Drinker, have you ever seen The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise? Yes, I have seen it and I loved it. Um, that, it's a fucking masterpiece. Would be a great movie to review. 
that might be the one after Army of Darkness with our little club, I think. Yeah. That um you know, that final battle scene where they they, they make like a, a final cavalry charge, um, and they end up finally getting stopped by those big um those big Maxim guns. Yeah. It's just god damn, that, that gets you every time. That's a hard scene to watch. Um, it's the old world fun. versus the new. Yeah. Um yeah, a really good film. I really like Last Samurai. Mm-hmm. Uh, Night King 01 says, To be fair, Casino Royale is actually the purest form of Bond in line with Ian Fleming's original version. Craig is more in line with the book version. Yeah, I know that the, the literary version of Bond is more serious um, and kind of stoic. Uh, I just think Craig took it to the level of just being mopey. Um, I was going to say, like, that I just don't think that the others are that at all, you know? Like, uh, I mean, they, maybe they have like moments of being stoic and stuff, but like it seems that the campiness or the charm or the um, the goofy element or whatever, if you want, however you want to categorize it, um, that's Bond at this point. It's certainly in the movie form. Like, if it's more accurate to the books, I'd be fucking surprised. I don't know, but I haven't read them. People keep saying that um, Timothy Dalton apparently nailed the the book version of Bond because mm. he, he kind of read up on it being the, the sort of professional that he is and like that's the version of Bond that he went for um, He totally seems abandoned. perfect to play a Bond villain <laughs> Yeah, well I mean look at him in, in fucking Hot Fuzz I just loved it, I'd love to it see is... Skinner as a Bond villain <laughs> Exactly, his voice and his delivery, they're perfect Yeah um, Alyosha says Open, the bottle went by too fast uh, No, this is not open, it's uh, Ardmore, as I was saying earlier um, OMG Puppies says, "What did you think of Utopia, the Brit version? I liked it. Um, very psychedelic and and a quirky and weird, um, but really good as well. Um, so yeah, I, I like that show." Uh, Ebenezer Adam says, "Feck up and down, go away now until the next time, of course." And that's for a hundred US dollars. So thank you very much, Ebenezer Adams. I appreciate it, man. Um, Ben Whiteside says, for a moment at the end of the film, I thought the black female 007 and the French woman were going to raise that kid together. <laughs> <laughs> give it time, give it time. Yeah, you know, you don't know. Deplorable patriarch, the nanobots are actually a feminist metaphor for Bond's toxic masculinity. Given his problematic, unwoke attitudes to women, if he were to spend time with Eminem, they would be damaged by his toxic masculinity, so Bond <laughs> must die. Um, his toxic masculinity would spread to them and kill them. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like a virus. No, oh, I can't say that word. Um, XSL says the Suicide Squad's uh, BT secretary got new spin-off porn film. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, Ellie's gay, by the way. Says here are some fake US ducats for you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Kimberly Moore says thank you for everything you do. Love your accent, and that's for a hundred US dollars. Thank hey. you, Kimberly. I appreciate that. Look at what our accents can do. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So us Brits are cashing in, man. Yep. Uh, Stephen S gave me five euros. Thank you, sir. OMG Puppy says, movie recommendation, The Devil's Backbone, great ghost story set during the Spanish Civil War by Guillermo del Toro. Um, I've not seen that. Sounds good, though. Potentially. Darren Daly says, the latest Dune trailer shows the Harkon and spaceship landing on top of the cast from The Last Jedi as they finally realize they're not on Tatooine as the score flashes across the screen. Dune 1, Star Wars nil. No. Uh, yeah, and hopefully that's what it turns out to be. And it's it's a kick-ass movie. Uh, Mandy Karevicus says, "What are your single most cherished possessions or items? Do you have a story behind it? Love you, drinker." Oh, that's a that's an interesting question. Hmm. Cherished possessions. This is where neither of us is prepared to go. Okay, well, <laughs> Isn't I was gonna it? Say, like- I'm curious. I'm trying to think of how I categorize it because, like, I guess my PC is one of the most expensive things I've got, and it is my career in some ways. But then, if we're talking like sentimental values, like, yeah, I've got some stuff from you know uh, family members that have passed away, and um, I, I have uh, a photo of myself with Spike from Buffy and Giles from Buffy. It's like I, I cherish them a lot. You know, it's, it's just what kind of I'm not sure exactly what kind of thing we're talking about. I assume it's going to be like sentimental value rather than you know monetary. Um, well, um, I've got a, a ring that has been passed down from 
all the the guys in the family that I'm very fond of and hope to take care of. I guess I could count <laughs> without going into more specifics. Hmm. No, I like that. Um, mine, uh, I think there's. I don't know if you can see it over in the corner there. It's just behind that case. I don't know. I don't have to. I have to go and get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, hold on. I'll, give me one second. Now it's just you and me, Chad. Run, run while you can. Are you a royal? Yeah. Are we still alive? Yeah, there we are. Uh, yeah, so this this was given to me. My grand my granddad gave this to me. Um, it's a it's an old fashioned shotgun. Um, it's not real. Like, sorry, it is a real weapon, but it's not usable anymore. It's been deactivated. But he had this all throughout his adolescence. Um, and passed it on to me when he when he died, and uh, yeah, I've been taking care of it ever since. So it's well over a hundred years old, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, it was a nice little family heirloom that's been passed down, and I guess it's always reminded me of him. So that would be one of my things, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I guess that would be that would be that. Um, what's the next one here? Uh, Georgi Ivanov says, to my favorite Scottish YouTuber, thank you, my friend, I appreciate it. Uh, Bear Business One says, have you seen the stories about the multiracial hobbits in the Lord of the Rings show? <laughs> Screen Rant article today. Yeah, I heard about this. Uh, so, yeah, I can't yeah, fucking wait for the discord on that show. Yeah, this, this is shaping up to be a fucking train wreck. Um, yeah, so they're basically saying it's from a different age of, of Middle Earth history, and so the hobbits are... are all different races, and I guess all the other ethnicities of Hobbit must have died off <laughs> okay. before Lord of the Rings happened. Um, so that's why they were too white in the original. It's just fuck off with your, with your <laughs> bullshit politics. You know, we know exactly why you've made them the way they are. Stop trying to justify it. Um, Happy birthday, Polly says. Four fifths of Craig Bond villains have a facial deformity. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, also lame how they all have revenge stories in place of political capers like the old ones. Yeah, they're all they're all to take revenge against yeah Bond or uh, someone close to Bond. Because Brosnan's era, I think they were all trying to take over the world, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. This, this was the only one I think um, out of all the Daniel Craig Bond movies where it was like a proper megalomaniacal plot. Yeah, because it felt the, weird. in Casino Royale, the guy was just trying to pay off a debt. The, in in Quantum of Solace, the dude was just trying to um, he was trying to corner the market in, in water for a certain country or whatever. Um, then you've got like the guy who wants revenge in Skyfall, an inspector, a guy who wants revenge. Um, and this no one was the only one where he wanted to kill a bunch yeah. of people. Yeah, I, I miss, I miss the ones who want to start World War Three or like you know take over the planet or something. Well, yeah, because uh, Goldeneye was. Uh, the end of the Soviet Union and the repercussions of like the fallout and stuff. You had uh, "World Is Not Enough" was about oil. Mm -hmm. uh, Tomorrow Never Dies was about like media. I think it was like newspapers yeah. and shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, they, they had different ideas. That Die Another Day was he was gonna he had like a giant Death Star type thing, right? It was like a satellite that could laser. Yeah, up, yeah. It, it could. Yeah, because it was it was gonna blow up all the landmines uh, at the DMZ in Korea so that they could invade from the north. There you go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just it's grounded now with Craig. So far grounded. <laughs> um, yeah, Chris H says, finished Squid Game to gate. With the hype, I expected to be disappointed. I enjoyed it. Ending was a bit weak, but still enjoyed. Would love a drink or take. Well, you shall have one, sir. Um, well, Cody Griffin says, Ellie's gay, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there you go. Uh, Hot Coffee says, if you want to become uh, a writer, to quote Shia LaBeouf, just do it. You'll be shit when you start, but like with everything, you'll get better. Yeah, you will. Just practice. Yeah. Try things. Experiment. Have fun. Um, you know, that's the great thing with writing. Like, if you're you're making a film, obviously you're constrained by budget or actors or whatever, but like, you want to write a book, great. You can make the most fantastical things imaginable. There's no limits. It's just your imagination. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can't go wrong, really. Uh, Alpha Nerd says Avatar: The Last Airbender was an excellent example on superb writing. 
I would look at the Devil's Advocate to you to your eternity, Stargate SG One and Lion King. Um, yeah, some good ones mentioned in there, that's for sure. Um, Brandon Muse says, here's the cash I won't spend on New Bond. I recently discovered the Viking series from 2013 by Michael Hurst and was curious of your thoughts on it. Thanks, Drinker. Now, I haven't seen Vikings, uh, but I've heard good things about it, so... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, about that recommended and um, Black Sails, I think, has been recommended a couple of times. You hear that? Um, Pirate no, thing. I've heard that, actually. Um, yeah. yeah, there's some shows. I'm st- I still haven't seen The Wire. That's a, that's a <laughs> sin of mine. Um, Robot Sean says, Hi guys, love your content, but I think you guys slightly underestimate what June is going to do at the box office. From all my research, I hear that it's easily followed by mainstream audiences and is loved by the book's fans. Um, oh, yeah, p- possibly. Hopefully that's the case. Yeah. Um, XSL says, Bunch of letters here and then atom tickets. I'm not sure what that refers to. Um, mm. GR Production says, have you seen Tintin's Secret of the Unicorn? 2011 Spielberg animated movie based off the Tintin comics. Very Indiana Jones. Um, I do remember Tintin from back in the day. I didn't think it was that old. Jesus, 2011. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I haven't seen it, I'm afraid. Um, John Odom says, the James Bond name is going to pass to Nomi when she changes her name to it after getting a sex change operation. Why not? She might as well. I'm sure she's as an actress can like wondering when they'll call her to be like, "Am I? Am I taking over? Can I be the new bot?" It's like I'm sure that's what they're discussing, you know. Yeah, I I think um, I mean again I could be wrong, but I think she had a much different role in the original draft of the movie, and they've reshot it. I just say that they you know. they wrote her the way that she is. If she would like, if Anna de Armas was 007, and she was just as like humble and appreciative of like James Bond as his reputation maybe and and his experience it could go over a lot easier but instead we have this like stuck up asshole who's like hey look at you dinosaur <laughs> like yeah yeah um yeah like how do you think bond fans are going to take to that it's like you're actively insulting the character that we love yeah they never seem to win people over yeah they never seem to figure that out it's, keep at it i guess uh, Theodore Pinnock says, Hey, Drinker and Longman, a friend argued that as the purpose of a movie is to entertain, if it entertains people, it is therefore a good movie, irrespective of writing quality. How do you respond to that argument? It's an um, uh, understandable but useless metric. I, I'd like to respond to it. Um, <laughs> it, it d- depends on how well it achieves the original aims of the writers. So if, say, you write a horror movie um, and it entertains people because it's genuinely terrifying, then great, you've done well. Um, if it's so laughably bad that people are just, you know, having a great time with it because they're mocking it, it's an entertaining film, but it's not entertaining for the reasons that you intended. So it's a failure. That that would be my sort of benchmark for how well it is made. I try to just erase all of that and just go from like the foundation of um, the consist internal consistency because it's, it's hard to really introduce any kind of additional metrics for me because I find that it, it'll start creating complications like um, for example with what you just said if that person then went back in time and said oh, no actually my horror movie is a comedy movie wink wink mm. and it's like so now is it successful and it's just like well that's, it feels a little bit strange um, I understand for example I understand that like when someone makes a shit ton of money and people are like hey Shang-Chi and Captain Marvel made all this money and you guys are saying it's shit I just sit there like because that's not what makes something good I'm sorry and then like, oh yeah, well, this many people enjoyed it. Like, let's say ninety five percent of audiences. And I'm like, that still doesn't mean that it's good. I'm sorry, like it has to not mean that because then, have you ever seen Anthropoid? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's a movie that a friend of mine showed me, and um, like nobody's seen it, and it's possibly one of my my favorite war movies that's ever been made. And um, nobody gives a fuck. It made like no money, and nobody's heard of it, so it's not really rated. And it's just like. Man, by this logic, like that movie just gets stepped on and it's a complete failure. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't want to go that way um, for assessing like quality and stuff. I understand why people say it, you know, and, and it does make me interested, right? You know, Squid Game. I probably wouldn't have checked that out if not for the fact that everyone's raving about it. I'd be like, all right, hmm. fine. I'll have a look. Uh, I just think that there's got to be more to it. Um, What's the next one? Um, Happy Birthday Polly says, what's the best movie you've never seen? Well, I think for me, it's going to have to be Boondock Saints. Oh, shit, you haven't seen, seen it. Damn. Yeah. 
Like that's yeah. on my it's on my list now because people have brought it up and yeah, I just never got around to watching it. Uh, best movie I haven't seen. Let's have IMDb answer that question, shall we? <laughs> Give me a sec. You can read the next one. I'll get you an answer. All right, cool. Um, Mikey Gussler says, during Chris Stuckman's No Time to Die review, he said the only pe- reason people were upset about Phoebe Waller-Bridge being signed on to write the film was because she was a woman. Wonder if he'll say the same about Indy 5. Are you fucking kidding me? It's nothing to do with that, man. It's like she's she's a comedy writer, and like I argue that she's a kind of overrated comedy writer that's totally incompatible with Bond. So I think that's probably the reason people weren't too happy with her being involved. Man, it's just lame to hear. Well, it is Chris Stuckman. He's usually like he just doesn't offend anybody. So whenever yeah. he does like have a hot take, for example, I don't know if you ever heard it, but he was like, "We shouldn't even really be criticizing movies because what we do is." shit all work compared to them we just go and see a movie and then spend 30 minutes making a video i remember seeing him say that and i was just like please speak for yourself you fuck (laughs) like i swear to god this is the guy though that makes like his reviews last for like four minutes it's insane he reviewed all he does is just yeah he just he stands in front of his camera and just goes like oh this movie was all right it wasn't great it wasn't terrible it was like it was this thing happens and that thing happens and yeah that's it it's like that's not a fucking review that's just you standing there and just giving a random opinion about like you know anything basically like it, you could apply this shit to any movie yeah like the, the, i don't think he's in a position to like criticize what what other people do when you know his is the most surface level analysis that you could possibly do so yeah, apparently the best film I haven't seen is uh, City of God. I haven't seen that. Okay. Does that sound familiar? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's number I mean, 22 on IMDb. If, well, I mean, if you've seen the first 21, then you've, you've done all right. Oh, well, <laughs> I would okay. say. Because I was going to say that the rest is like um, A New Hope, Saving Private Ryan, Interstellar, Spirited Away, Green Mile, Parasite, Leon. I've seen all of these. It's just like, I haven't seen The Pianist's. Um, oh, Harakiri. I've not seen that. Apparently, that's beloved. There you go. <laughs> that's an interesting yeah. answer. Or not. Um, James Bursey here says, Oi, long man and drinker, when are you coming to Texas? Just met up. Uh, sorry, just meet up with Rags in Arkansas and drive on down to a land flowing with vodka and whiskey. That sounds like my kind of land, man. I'm there. Well, um, hopefully, borders open back up or oh, restrictions yeah, yeah. open back up, brother. Um, Curtis D of Montana says hello years ago Wolf's channel led me to Mauler and Rags which led me to Drinker great right I miss Wolf is he okay Mauler um, still drinking yeah. Crystal Head vodka martinis and oxycodone yummy um, I, I talk to him every once in a while we watch some stuff he, he's fine he's just obviously doesn't want anything to do with the internet basically nice uh, don't blame him in the slightest uh, nope. the Craig Lee Lawrence experience says watch the devil all the time if you haven't uh, it's a good story with familiar faces, and given the actors' respective roles in other films, it showed future ridiculous crossovers just might happen. Fair uh, enough. Is that the one with Tom Holland? The devil all the time. I, th- I think it might be. Let me search. Uh, yeah, Tom Holland. There you go. Nice. I've not seen it, but yeah. It, it, I saw the trailer, and I've been like, man, Tom Holland's uh, branching out now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you got a movie on Spider Man, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Mr. Nobody says the Craig era works best as a trilogy. Story and character arcs and end beautifully with Skyfall. Spectre killed it. Um, no Time to Die is the dirt they buried it with, <laughs> pretty much. Um, Cadre Johnson says some Scottish people can't say purple burglar alarm. Well, I can. I just did it and I'm <laughs> drunk. Yeah, um, you nailed it. Matt House Rex says which is more dangerous, a mall drinker or a drunk mauler? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. I don't really see you drunk, actually, so I don't know. Maybe you have, could be dangerous. Have you not seen? It's like one of the most beloved parts of EFAP where I was I was very drunk and I was I saw the Isle of Man flag for the first time. Oh yeah, the legs. <laughs> I don't think I quite believed it was real. <laughs> um. Oh shit! Where are we at here? Yeah, sorry, I just had to refresh there. Oh, here we go. Uh, Shark Dentures says, Drinker, too many super chats equals first world problems. I know. Gosh, it's such a fucking... 
such a bind being me, you know. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's awesome. Like I appreciate all of these these super chats that come in. Um, it just right at the end of a stream, like usually when I'm trying to wrap things up um, and deliver like some poignant speech about uh, you know. The, the the stream that we've had that's when like a bunch more come in and it's like ah oh, fuck you're just doing this to me to keep me on aren't you <laughs> <laughs> um uh, what's this skippy on ninja says please watch deadwood if you haven't already um i watched some of it back in the day with uh oh, fucking what's his name i can never forget i can never remember that actor's name is it timothy oliphant yeah yeah timothy oliphant yeah um yeah, Deadwood was a great series. They brought it back, didn't they? Or they're bringing it back in a movie? Didn't they get a movie? Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. Um, Ian McShane, just amazing in everything he does. Fucking yeah. legendary voice. Oh, yeah. Ian McShane's awesome. Did you Did you ever watch... Um, Hot Rod? Hot Rod, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just, I really... I, that, that fight scene at the end just slays yeah. me every time. <laughs> <laughs> Better choreography yeah, I mean, than fucking mod Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> like n- knocking him through a wall and shit, yeah. and like hits him with a ninja throwing star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love hot rods. You have a throwing star. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, old man, <laughs> old man, young heart. <laughs> Fucking tackles him through a wall. <laughs> um, Benjamin Flensborg says a hot dog for As Muller and Lord Drinker. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, Mikey Gussler. Watched 28 Days Later yesterday for the first time and thought it was very good. I thought to myself, Mauler and Drinker would like this due to the characters making smart decisions. Um, they do generally, that. actually. Yeah, I'll give them that. I remember liking 28 Days and Weeks Later. Um, I haven't seen them in a while, though. I, all our, I don't know about you, but... Well, have you seen 28 Weeks Later? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. I remember that... Um, something I'll never forget is that I felt real tense in the opening where Robert Carlyle is like vaguely just just escapes his house and then he's just being chased by zombies across like hills or whatever yeah um and i think it was because it was the 28 28th franchise if you will right that i felt propelled fast zombies into um uh into the like a the pu- public view more so I, i'd have to retrace that i'm not sure who did it first but making zombies fast is almost like a um if you watch the resident evil movies they go from slow to fast like uh, as it yeah. progresses, because you fast zombies are just much more scary. They they tend to be. I I just um, yeah. There's so many great scenes in Twenty Eight Days Later, particularly. Um, I, I love the scene where they their their van gets a flat tire or something in a, a tunnel, and they've got to try and change it out quickly. And then you see the the infected chasing after them. Like you see their shadows at the far end of the tunnel, and mm-hmm. you know that they're only like minutes away. Uh, you know, I love that idea of like working under pressure to try and like do something that's probably quite yeah. easy under normal circumstances, but suddenly it becomes this big ordeal. Well, you know uh, what? Um, the Resident Evil movie we were just talking about earlier from Paul W. Sanderson, there's this one moment in it. There's probably a couple of things I like in it, but there was this one moment where they power off the Red Queen, and by doing that, it unlocks all the doors in the facility, right? Yeah. And then the camera starts, like, it shows where we've been, like, loads of hallways. And then you can just hear this really faint hum of a horde. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, that's actually pretty effective. Because uh, you don't know how far away they are, but they're unlocked yeah. now. I, I've, I've said this before about movies like this. I love the idea of like approaching terror. Yeah. You know, it's it's far away initially, but you know this horrifying thing is coming for you. And like you've you've got to try and get away from it before it reaches you. Uh, I think that's that's quite a cool idea. Uh, and movies that can capture that feeling of, of approaching dread are are pretty effective in that way. Um, and yeah, like in in Twenty Eight Days Later, I remember when they're 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 trying to climb the, the stairs in like a tower block because there's yeah. a, a, a light that they've seen at the top, and you know the infected are downstairs. They're probably like several floors below them, but they're gaining on them because they're so much faster. And like Killian Murphy, I think is is exhausted because he's not really had to move um mm-hmm. he's been in a coma for like weeks yeah, and so he's brennan gleason shows up <laughs> yeah uh, but again just like that the idea of like they're they're getting closer i can't outrun them they're, they're closing in on me like that it's, it's pretty cool i like that um jory hellman uh gave me 400 sex i don't know what sex are 
Hmm. But they're they're from somewhere. But thank you, man. Um, Citrus K Night Gaming says, "Hey, fellas, missed the main stream. Watching it now. Great crew on. Thanks for the open bars. Have a drink or two on me. Cheers. Thank you, my friend. Will do." Um, Stephen Bobo says, can I suggest watch the Highlander anime? It's a reboot of the first Highlander movie done by the people who did Ninja Scroll. Damn, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, neither did I. Uh, Deplorable Patriarch, I wonder if the decision to make Nomi a POC actually constrained the writers in giving her a more punchy role, as it might have seemed racist had her character been painted too bossy and angry. I, I don't know with Nomi. Um, I mean, you, you could have made her charming. could have made her cool. Imagine if she'd just be nice. Yeah. Imagine if she was like, yeah, you know, um, you you've got a hell of a reputation at MI6. You know, it's it's an honor to be, you know, taking on your your code name. Um, you know, I hope you don't. I hope we don't run into each other as enemies because I don't really want to have to like go up against you. you you'd just instantly like her, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, they could have done it completely differently, but they didn't. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Gustler says, what is Jay Bowman's worst take? Claiming Force Awakens is good and better than Return of the Jedi or claiming yeah. Joker was bad? So, as to the first take, I'm pretty sure Red Letter Media regret their coverage of The Force Awakens because, in retrospect, I think they all think it's shit. Um, and I think even Rich Evans was like, I said it was shit from the get-go. And they show like a clip where Rich Evans is like, meh, I didn't think it was that good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, 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 I remember Mike loved it. Like, Mike loved they, it, yeah. But yeah, they did I like think, a, a street, a, a, sorry, a video when they just got back from the theater, and he was like, "Yeah, I fucking loved it. It was like everything I hoped it was going to be." Exactly. It's the JJ was knows how to do that, and I think even I had the same a similar experience. I don't think I loved it. I just I was just happy. Um, and if you had asked me why, I would have just given you all the key jangly stuff. I'd have been like, "It was so great to see the Millennium Falcon. It was so great to see Han Solo." And I think these new characters, there's loads of potential. You know, a stormtrooper that's defected. That's so great. Uh, this girl, I don't know much about her, but like, you know, I, I hope that she has an interesting journey. And Kylo Ren, isn't that interesting? And Vader is influencing him. What could that mean? And who's this Snoke guy? And um, you know, the, this First Order thing, they must have been around the whole time. I wonder what, how they're going to explain all that. Treating The Force Awakens as if it's just like a teaser trailer for an actual set of movies? Yeah. When it's supposed to be a whole story. And I think that just time destroyed The Force Awakens. It's completely been obliterated. Nobody has good things to say about it really anymore. Not even the people who... Um, like TLJ, like Force Awakens. Um, and yeah, and I think Red Alert Media have soured on it. I don't know if Jay Bauman still thinks that TFA is better than Return of the Jedi, but holy fuck if he does. Uh, and then secondly, yeah, he said that, um, I think he, 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 the Joker review they did has uh, been downvoted quite a bit. It wasn't, wasn't very uh, agreeable, a lot of the mm. stuff they said. And Jay made some weird comments about it. We, because I remember the EFAP we did soon after that video came out. We were just talking about it in the opening half an hour. It was just like it was bizarre. He said like uh, Todd Phillips isn't a real filmmaker. Is this the the kind of movie Bob um, tack with Joker, where it's like, oh, it's just a rip off of Taxi Driver, so I can be all snooty and look down on it because like it's, yeah. it's a modern kind of you know interpretation of that, which is a pretty shit take to have, really. If a movie like is inherently good, or if it stands on its own merits, then that's what you should judge it by. I think. Yeah, it was uh, it was frustrating, and and it was a little bit cruel, I guess, because like Todd Phillips, you know, The Hangover is not a movie that you just go, "Wow, you're not a real filmmaker." It's like Hangover is pretty funny. And it, it it was pretty influential. People loved it. I don't know. Like, well, I mean, you know, I I think it even speaks well of the guy. Like to to go from just having done pretty lightweight comedy films to something like that. Um, and yeah. to have made a good go of it, it's like, well, okay, this is a versatile director who can do a bunch of different things. Like that's a good thing. Oh yeah, as, as someone just pointed out in chat, it's worth mentioning. Plinkett apologized for um, recommending uh, JJ as a director for Star Wars. He was like, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, He's like, it wasn't my fault. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the next one? Curtis D of Montana says, Drinker, have you ever had American moonshine? If not, I you should. I can get you some. Thank you and more for keeping me and my wife sane and laughing. No um, problem. Good stuff. Um, no, I've never had American moonshine because whenever I've been over there, I've not really been able to access it. Um, I've had Chinese moonshine and it's been god-awful. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'd like to try the American stuff. Uh, Mikey Gosler says, Mauler, did you hear that Ed Boon recently said he was in talks to have Buffy the Vampire Slayer as a DLC character for Mortal Kombat 11? I mean, that's cool. Uh, 
because funnily enough, you know, I was asking you like, what is the most painful of all the things that have been destroyed? Mm-hmm. Buffy is like something that is going to get destroyed within the next probably five or ten years. I'm not looking forward to it. Um, mm-hmm. But having her as a guest in a more combat game, go for it. Especially if they get Sarah Michelle Gellar to voice it, that'd be neat. Yeah. Um, Jalen Folk says, "Have you seen FX's Legion?" Uh, yeah, I have actually. I thought it was all right. Uh, very, very different and weird um, in a lot of places, but um, overall, quite enjoyed it. Bit goofy. Um, Night King One says, "I agree. Timothy Dalton in License to Kill is probably the most uh, book accurate Bond, except he doesn't have a scar on his left cheek." Um, mm. Damn, that's some action man territory right there. Um, <laughs> This whole guy says thoughts on Payback and also Suicide Kings. Um, Payback I liked. That was Mel Gibson, I believe. Um, yeah, I thought it was a pretty decent movie. I haven't seen Suicide Kings, though. Payback? I, I think I watched that back-to-back with Ransom. Do you remember that film? Yeah, I remember Ransom. That's a, that had Patrick Stewart in as well, didn't it? Did it? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm thinking of a different one. Um, yeah, we're, that the one I'm thinking of, he's like a conspiracy theorist or something, Mel Gibson. Um, yeah, Ransom... That's got um, guy from Of Mice and Men in it. Guy from yeah, and he's in Apollo thirteen. Gary Sinise, he's in it. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, I like Ransom. I like. Well, the, I mean, the, I like Mel Gibson as an actor. He's just a a person that says some and, and a director. To be fair, yeah, good director. Um, you just yeah, if you separate stuff. the art from the artist, then you're yeah. Fine. <laughs> um, Fred Sacco says, please review things to do in Denver if you're dead. It's awesome. Here's some US dollars. Don't worry, we'll just print more. <laughs> yeah, that's the solution. Just make more. Uh, yeah, thanks for the donation, man. And uh, yeah, things to do in Denver if you're dead. Oh, I keep wanting to say that's Christian Slayer, but it's not. I've not heard Fuck. of it. Yeah, I've heard of the movie, but oh man, it's a long time ago. It's like a 90s film. So it's an old one. Um, yeah, it's. it's Gone. I'll need to look it up. Right, here we go. So that has got. Uh, oh, it's got Andy, Andy Garcia, Christopher Lloyd, um, Treat Williams, Steve Buscemi, Christopher Walken, Firuza Balk, who was in the fucking Island of Dr. Moreau, um, and Gabriella Anwar. But yeah, Jesus, everyone was in that movie. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll uh, I'll need to look that up again. Uh, Steve John says, "Cherished possession, a guitar I worked hard for when I was a teenager. I still have it. Nice. That's a heartwarming story. Um, it's not like me where it's just like bottle of booze or something." <laughs> uh, Dame D says, "I heard someone mention Murder by Death. You have to check it out. Hilarious 1976 murder mystery satire with a great cast: uh, Peter Sellers, Truman Capote." Uh, David Niven, Peter Falk, Maggie Smith, and even Alec Guinness. You'll love it. God damn, that's some mm. cast. Um, Deplorable Patriarch says, have you seen the blonde dreadlock POC Targaryens in the Game of Thrones prequel trailer? <laughs> yeah, we've seen them. Yeah. What a fucking disaster. Um, Taylor Haha says, Black Sails is the pirate experience we all needed. We all need pirate experiences. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's reboot Pirates of the Caribbean with women. Yeah, that would be a, a see. That would have been a joke hit. at one point. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now we're living in clown world, and jokes have become reality. Um, be Scott great. McRae says we'd love it if you did a review of uh, Rob Roy, one of the best sword fights ever. Yeah, that ends with a guy getting like cleaved in half. It's fucking brutal. Liam Neeson's um, in that, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's um, Rob Roy, assuming. Mandy Karevicus says, I'm giving you 50 freedom bucks for being the only YouTuber has ever said my last name correctly. Yes! Nice. I just want to hug and kiss your huge forehead now. <laughs> 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 Thanks. I like you followed that up with a, a nice insult, so cheers. Uh, Zero Hour Discussion says, Hail Drinker in the Long Man. You guys inspired me to start my YouTube channel. Drinker, sent you an email if you're using the same here uh, as your YouTube info. Be safe. Well, I will get your email, don't worry. Uh, RRTNZ says Hail Drinker, Alcoholic Auteur Quick writing question uh, How would you go about writing a book differently than writing a screenplay? Cheers um, Make it a lot longer Yeah, I mean a screenplay you're going to be limited to about 90, maybe 120 pages um, With a book you can go up to four, five, six hundred. 600 So you've got a lot more freedom um, 
and yet you can do, you can just fit in a lot more explanation, a lot more motivation for characters and stuff than you could do in a screenplay. You have to kind of, well, with screenplays, the shoot the the rule is that you've got to show rather than tell. Whereas with books, you can tell if you want to. So I guess that's my difference. Um, out of my system, give me five pounds. Thank you. And Curtis D of Montana, drinker tomorrow is my birthday. Would you toast me, please? It will be an awesome birthday present. You know what? I will, Kurt. I will toast you, Curtis. Let me just pour him a drink here. All right. Cheers to you, Curtis D of Montana. Happy birthday, mate. Cheers. Excellent. I think we're almost there, actually. Let me just catch up. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Adrian Han says, have you guys heard about Heels? Stephen Amell um, and Alexander Ludwig uh, as bros in a small town wrestling league. Uh, FNL vibes, fantastic stuff. Um, no, I've not heard about Heels. No. Um, no, another way. Did you look at that? Um, <laughs> Schmandalf says, just watch Doctor Sleep. I loved the first half, but thought the second half went off the rails. What's your thoughts? Um, I had no idea what to think when I finished that film. I didn't understand much of anything. I was just like, well, that was something. Um, I'm a big fan of Shining. And what I heard is that this is a sequel to the book and the film. And the book and the film don't have the same story. So it's no. it's jumbled. Uh, and like a friend of mine who's a big fan of uh, the book and still thinks the film is good said the Doctor Sleep was a fucking disaster. And I was like, oh, man. Uh and it's one of those ones where I'm just like, I, I leave it to everyone else to figure it out. I, I, there was really cool visuals in it, but it was a bit of a weird film to me. Hmm. Fair news. Um, Aurora Uplinks says, you should watch Volunteers. It's got John Candy and Tom Hanks in it. Hmm. Um, Hot Coffee says, Mauer, you did, uh, sorry, did you EFAP yesterday, October the 9th? I looked for it, but I must have missed it. Yeah, it's already up on Mula. It's uh, four and a half hours. We did... Um, we looked at a video saying that Black Widow was brilliant, and they barely talked about the movie. And their comment section was filled with how men needed like stop reviewing stuff, which was <laughs> fucking weird. Uh, and super. We're not awkward. allowed to have opinions on things more, was, don't you know? I'll be honest with you, man. It was super fucking cringe, and like I'm getting really tired of the whole like men need to stop talking about. Could you imagine if you flipped that for any other demographic? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah this is, this is where it just falls apart, doesn't it? Uh, um. Yeah, and the first hour of that was uh, me being mad at my own subreddit. <laughs> it happens. Uh, uh, here's one. General Zod says, Moller, why do you not read the usernames when you're reading Super Chats on EFAP? Just wondering. Oh, perfect timing. So, well, I don't mind uh, spending a little bit to explain this. We, we, I have to explain every once in a while because I know it's a bit like confusing. But one of my biggest inspirations on YouTube was um, Toll Biscuit. I don't know if you know much about him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he Obviously, passed away a few years ago, didn't he? Yeah, it's fucking devastating. Uh, he was just integrity in a person. Uh, one of the most inspiring creators. And one of the things he came out and said earlier on, which was really unpopular, was he was unhappy with uh, PewDiePie saying, like, how's it going, bros? And, like, all of my viewers are my bro army, and I'm, I'm good, and I'm on good terms with all my bros. And he was like, why? Why do you have a problem with that? And he was like, because you're... You're you're furthering a system where like all of your viewers start to believe they're your friends, and um, that can be really damaging for them mentally, socially, and just everywhere. And you shouldn't, and it'll convince them to give you more and to sacrifice more of their own lives and themselves because they just want that relationship with you. And you got to be really careful to draw the line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was a, uh, and you, you took lots of um, efforts to make sure that happened. And so when we were first starting up EFAP, I thought uh, we 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 did read like I think names and uh, amounts. And then, like, there was fame generating for people who were coming up more consistently than others. There was people getting more and more sort of connected, and there was, like, a culture around who's doing it and how much they're giving. And um, I just decided that there's a pro and a con to both of these. The pro of reading out the names and stuff is that it's, like, a form of just it's nice to have their name said. They appreciate that. And then the number can really, I guess, correlate with how much they, they, they've given because this applies to what's happening right now. Um, but then the other side, the pro and con is the pro, uh, the con is that their name doesn't get read. And so it's sort of like splits into the ether. But the, the pro is that their question or their message still gets read and appreciated and, and responded to. It's just it um, limits what my worry is about generating too much of a parasocial environment. 
Um, it can be a little bit uh, lame for a viewer to hear this. I just think that it's really important. And what I found yesterday was that even though we do that on EFAB, literally just responding to a super chat in a way that the chatter didn't want you to, like um, the example I gave of this is if I said, oh, you know, drink a, I recommend um, Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's a really good movie. And then you go, oh, fuck, I hate that movie. And like, I have a bad day for the rest of my, my day because you said that. Like, I really want to discourage that. I'd be like, don't don't feel that way. Don't get that connected. You don't. We don't know each other that well, uh, as in myself and the viewer. But that doesn't mean that the, the relationship isn't um, an enjoyable one. And I want you guys to have fun. And we really appreciate the messages. And so we usually do a catch-all at the end. Like, thank you so much for asking your questions. Hopefully you got the answers you wanted. And thank you so much for the money to, to just keep it. Um, Keep that line there, and so every once in a while, people be like, "Why don't you read the names and the money?" And it's just like that's that's why I just worry that um, I should do everything I can to make sure that line is there. Um, and I, I I think it's fair for some people to say that's extreme. It's just that uh, I don't know. It seems to be working for now, and I just that's the environment I want to encourage. That's all. No, can't argue with that, man. I mean, it seems pretty fair line of reasoning there. I would say, um, yeah. I mean, I I, I guess. When I read, like, I, I read the names out just so I can keep track of, of who said what, almost. Um, I think it's completely fair. Uh, I don't judge anybody for doing that. Yeah. Um, I, I think generally the only time I read out the, the amount is just if they haven't put anything. Like, if it's just a blank um, super chat, it's like, well, I need to say something about what this person's <laughs> done, I suppose. So, like, that's tend, what I tend to do. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess I try to just respond to every person Um like if they've if they've asked a really detailed question, it's like well, give them a detailed answer if possible. Um, if not, yeah. like you can't. I guess you can only work with what you've got. Um, out of my system says buckwits. That's all I got there. <laughs> so again, that's an example of I can't say much there. Um, Zero hour discussions says gents, if you enjoy Castlevania anime, please check out um, Helsing Ultimate OVA available on YouTube. Any chance you'll review in the Mouth of Madness? Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to review. Mouth of Madness. That's a that's a great horror movie, and I, I very much enjoy it. Um, Classic. It's got Sam Neill screaming. Have you been watching their um their their Carpenter sort of um best worst to best listing on the RLM? Uh, no, I haven't been watching RLM for a while actually. Um, oh well, it's it's kind of fun, and it made me forget like what movies Carpenter's made. To be honest, yeah, no, he's made loads. I mean, he was on that winning streak back in the eighties. Um, yeah, obviously, kind of faded out in the nineties, just lack of budget yeah. and stuff. But yeah, he had some great ones to his name. Uh, I don't know. I shouldn't say his name then. Um, <laughs> great answer, Mauler. Don't read my name. <laughs> I won't say it. Uh, Night King One says, "Fun fact: You know why Bond is so careless about revealing his name in Casino Royale? The book he gets a uh, W carved into his hand, marking him as a spy. Did not know that. There we hmm. go. Bit of information there about Bond." Uh, Right. That is interesting to think about that he does go around telling everybody he's James Bond and he's been doing this for like a hundred years. <laughs> it's like I know. You, maybe it's it's yeah, it's it's I always assumed it was just a matter of convenience for the movies. He's just like, yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. It just yeah, Bond, James Bond. Just always have it, to say it. It would work for a while because like it's just a name, it doesn't mean anything necessarily. It could be a code name, whatever, but um once you use it constantly, it's like it's probably spreading around eventually, right? James yeah. Bond. Yeah, this guy named Bond, like he shows yeah. up and then people start dying. <laughs> uh, uh, there we go. Um, my name is Jake Bond. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. We've we've successfully made it to end of all the super chats. So we did it. We did it, Mauler. We did it together, and I appreciate your help on this one. No uh, problem. What's this? I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to this one. What's up with your terrible take on the Final Fantasy VII remake? You don't notice all the terrible writing and tropes? No, because I fucking love it. Oh my god! My objectivity went out the window with that one. I just enjoyed it that much. I went on a little trip down memory lane and had a midlife crisis, all simultaneously. Um, but yeah, as I was saying there, no, it's uh, it's been great to do the stream with you, and thank you for. Thank you for coming in and helping out with these super chats, man. It's been great to have you on with this. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm I'm very experienced reading super chats at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for like a thousand hours of it. I know, Jesus. Uh, and thanks to everyone here who's, who's sent so many and been so generous. Like, I really appreciate all of this. Um, we've got a few coming up here because this is what I said would happen. Yep. I could never just do a poignant wrap up. Uh, thanks for answering them all. 
Would you ever have fans joining a movie stream? It would be interesting to talk about something with you, preferably Bond. I mean, I've done it from time to time. I've done a happy hour with with uh, subscribers and stuff. It's just I kind of have to spread them out a little bit. Um, thanks for you guys subjecting yourself to copious amounts of torture, all in order to save our sanity. You're like Jamie Lannister when Game of Thrones wasn't crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, yeah, different signs. Um, but yeah, I think that's us. Finished? Oh, no, we're not. Dinkwish! Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, yeah, I've done a few streams with you. Um, Drinker, thank you for your recent bid. I appreciate your passion. Well done. Also, what is that uh, watch? Cheers to you both. Oh, yeah, so this is a um, this is a diesel watch. So it's it's nice and chunky. I like this one. Mm. Um, people always think it's really expensive for some reason, but it's really not. It's like 100 <laughs> quid or something. Um, but I doesn't, like it. doesn't do anything gadget-wise? Explode, maybe? It doesn't. It doesn't have an EMP built into it. I'm sorry. No. Oh, not to pick on Spectre again, but when Q gives him the watch and he goes, "Does it do anything special?" He's like, "No, but it has a loud alarm." <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, is he saying it has a bomb?" And then it's like, "Yes." And I was like, "Why the fuck wouldn't you just say it has a bomb?" <laughs> that, that's information you should probably give him because you know that he could really misuse that. I, I I was baffled by it. I was like, "Why would you tell? That could mean a lot of things." Q, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're you're really relying on him like being quite object sorry um quite abstract in his thinking yeah because I, I would go with that that's another thing classic i say classic bond basically everything before daniel craig q and bond's relationship man especially in the brosnan era fucking fantastic yeah well that was this that was the original um q wasn't it yeah you know, then you had the john Cleese right? version that came in uh, um yeah, well, because like if you watch Q's first scene, I implore everyone in chat to do it. It is so uh, sterile. He's like, "Mr. Bond, this is a briefcase. You press this button, and it does this." And then Sean Connery's like, "Mm-hmm, mm-hmm." Um, when you fast forward to Pierce Brosnan's era, Brosnan and him are just trolling each other like, yeah. <laughs> with different things. It's really fun. Yeah, but there's there's so much history there. Eh? It's like you, you know, there's something yeah. to build on, and that's that's what's great to watch. Uh, what the hell are we going to have now? Don't know, because it's going to be a new Q and a new Bond and everything. Gay Q. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that'll important. Be, that'll be edited right. out for China, I guarantee you. Um, anyway, well, uh, we, we have finished up there, so I guess we'll finish. We'll, we'll shut down the stream before any more Super Chats come in. So <laughs> thanks to all you guys for, for being so awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this catch-up stream. Uh, and thank you for all the extra Super Chats. We, we both really appreciate it. Um, and I guess, yeah. We're going we're gonna to finish up there. That's all we've got. So we're going to go away now. See you, folks. <laughs>